where we left off last time. A portion of our adventurers had uh, gotten into a Farrican mess and were in the middle of a uh, maze following out on one of the goddess's many tests and tribulations for the humans that inhabit Theros. They were doing well. They'd passed the fire pit. They'd figured out uh, some of the symbols that were on uh, the relic stations at the beginning of the maze. They opened this door, walked into this room, and now they are faced by four skeletons that have risen up the vat in front of them. One of the skeletons rears back, hurls a stone, hitting Vara and knocking her unconscious. Leaving three Irex, Tikaros, and Ptolemaeus to face the skeletons. And I think this would be a good time to say the magic words. Roll initiative. A. Very well. Hey, I'm good. I'll, I'll just stay in the back. Yeah, I'd just rather not roll initiative. Yeah, I'm just, just going to not be an initiative. <laughs> if it doesn't, if you don't get the, t click on your token and get it up there, just send it to me in Zoom and I will enter it. Oh, never mind. Orcos is not here to help. Uh, it did it again. It, it's completely blank. You guys start putting in your numbers, and it's got repeats from last time. Makes Fight no with sense. us, Orcos. <laughs> okay, so I've got five for Tikaros. Is that right? I think that's wrong. I did a 22. Well, like I said, roll 20 is Ten. being, uh, that's being from my last friend. Time. So 22. Yeah. Yes. Irax, what did you get? 19. All right, that one actually worked, and Ptolemaeus, it doesn't show yours at all. So let's. Oh, because I, I rolled, I rolled the real dice. It's ah, just, real I dice. What are those? It. Okay, <sighs> and what would that be? Fifteen. Fifteen. Excellent. All right. Let me get the skellies in here, and let's get the order set. Tikaros, I know you're not going to believe this, but you're number one. That never <laughs> happens. <laughs> ah! Right. I see. Oh, man. I see Vara go down in front of me and hurl a firebolt at these, whichever one threw that thing at her. I'm just going to hurl a firebolt as an immediate thing. I will mark uh, that one with red. Yeah. I'm coming for you, skeleton. Nobody hurts my friends. With a great big 15 to hit. And that is a hit. Yes. Firebolt. It's an eight plus. That's my best firebolt damage ever. 18 points of damage. Oh my gosh. That is pretty oh good. My God. Whoa. Wow. That's the best ever. I usually roll ones and twos on these. Oh, can I, can I say it on stream? Can I say happy birthday, Kraz? And that must be your dice's gift to you. <laughs> yes, it is. Finally. Thanks, so she's 21. Ted. She's now legal, everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right so excellent hit excellent hit anything else you would like to do tigris that's my turn i'm going to stay right where i am all right all right uh right so <clears throat> seeing that one of them has been attacked uh red is the only one that's taken damage so far right yes so uh Deciding to focus on one enemy at a time, Hyrax follows up by attacking a red. He draws a javelin, uh, throws it at this one in particular, okay. and we got from that guy. That's one. That is going to be, well, 15 plus 6, so 21 to hit. That's a definite hit. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. And before that, I would cast Hunter's Mark. Sorry. 
Okay. As a bonus action. All uh, right. So it's going to be 296. All right. So that is 13 piercing damage. Excellent. And uh, being a gloom stalker, because this is my first turn and I'm a dread ambusher, I get to uh, make an additional weapon attack. Awesome. As part of that action, with an additional D8 of damage with it. Uh, so if I hit. And that will hit uh, with 25. Yep, absolutely. And that is 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 7 is 8, plus 3 is 21 piercing damage on that second attack. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, when you hit, he shatters. I mean, not just the bones separate, but they shatter. You just do so much damage, the impact just splinters bone. There's splinters of bone flying everywhere. And the skull just drops to the ground, and the glaive that he was holding in his hand falls. Fighters across the ground. The other skeletons take a look over at him, and then focus their attention on Hyrax. Whoops. That's my turn, though. Excellent. Ptolemaeus. Um, if I were trying to move Vara's unconscious body outside of the room, would that be an action or a bonus action? Uh, I think that would be an action. You're going to have to grab okay. and drag, so. If that's the case, I'm going to just stand here and kind of, well, actually, no, I could stay here and, and, and still kind of block damage for her. And I'll just look at the skeleton that, that, uh, kind of was destroyed and shattered there and just look at uh give a glance at the blue one and just go all of you had perfectly good glaives and that one decided to throw a rock and look what happened and um i will cast vicious mockery at the blue one okay. uh it is a wisdom saving throw of 15. that is a fail Hey. That one takes D and D, where you can turn bullying back on the people. <laughs> <laughs> that one takes five points of psychic damage. Yay. And um also has disadvantage on its next attack roll. Okay. Excellent. And with it also I will use a bonus action to kind of tap Hyrax in the shoulder and just be like good job and good luck. I think they're all staring at you. And yes, the rest. Yeah, then the Bardic Inspiration over as well. Alright. Thank you. And that'll be it. The skeletons take their glaives, tap the base on the side of their leg and they each take few steps forward, closing the gap. As they move, however, they make a horrible noise of bone grinding on bone and clicks and clacks as they move. And it echoes and fills the chamber. And I need each of you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ah, is this a spell or magical effect? Um... It's more an effect of them being this creature and making this horrible, horrific noise. So I don't think it's going to be considered a magical in this case. Straight roll for me. Oh. <laughs> is, that a, is that a mercy, a high, or a five? Or all of them? That's a five. <laughs> That that frown was so intense, hey, hey. Sam. I thought you had a filter on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So five for uh, five for Hyrax. Um, yeah. I think we all failed. I got a twelve. Uh, that is a fail. Oh. 
And Kraz, how'd it go? Uh, she, a... She's either frozen or... I got a 16. Oh. Oh, Six... I'm... 16? Am I back? 16. Yeah, uh, actually, the only one who made the save is Tikaros. The rest of you are frightened until the end of your next turn. Uh, I certainly am. The skeletons approach, raise their weapons in an attack posture, and I'm going to put you on hold there as we are back at the wagon where Adrastos is awakening. <laughs> I guess everyone leaves me in the end. Yep. <laughs> Prime turns around. Oh, you're awake. Um, I'm afraid everyone was following some goblins. Which way did they go? Um, that way. <sighs> kind of adjusts his shoulders, grabs his gear, jumps out, and then looks at Prime and says, Thank you for letting me sleep, but next time wake me up if there's a fight. And then trunch, 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 trunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you are, I assume, attempting to track them, so I'm going to need a survival yes. check from you. I can do and that. And since you are tracking your friends, I'm going to let you have advantage on it. I can do that, too. I thought you might be able to. No buts. Oh, wait, no, that's not bad. I, I misread that. Um, 22. All right, that's good enough. You follow and you can see where they've gone. They obviously were moving quickly and were not super worried about, you know, covering their tracks. And you come to a large kind of a cave, but it's more of a hole that drops down. But you can tell that it goes into a cave network once it's under the ground. And I go. You're going to jump in? Uh-huh. It's a bit of a drop, but you're a nimble guy, so I'm going to give credit that you make it. Uh, you hit the ground. You can see footprints. As you make your way in a little bit, uh, it is dark. It is pitch black in here. Okay. Um, is the darkness magical? No, it is not. Okay, cool. I do have a little bit of dark vision. You're walking forward, and you almost, because you're following the trail, you almost trip and fall into this pit. But what gets your attention is the blood that is around it. And it's, it's fairly fresh blood. And you can see marks where people have tried to traverse on the edge. You can see that somebody obviously went over the edge. And then, apparently... Some others followed. But it's a deep okay. pit. And at the bottom of it appears to be, well, looks like spikes or something. Okay. Um, going to revert to the fact that I am a cat. And I'm going to get down on all fours and I'm going to sniff the blood and see if it smells familiar. All right. Because all of these people have bled around me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just give you this roll so we can kind of move along here. And I need yeah, you to sorry. Uh, you definitely, you'd get advantage on it. Uh, you definitely recognize the blood. I can't remember who fell in the pit, though. <laughs> but there were a couple of people who got bloody on this uh, incident. So we'll just say it's one of your friends. Okay. Hey, it's um, been a month. Give me a break. No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, all right. So does it look like the cave like terminates in this pit or does it look like there is more past the pin. It kind of bends around so you don't get a straight shot across, and it's also quite long. So you can't really tell. It disappears, on, not really around a corner. You can tell it's still a bit straight, but there are outcroppings around it, so you don't know. But there's no, like, more cave in the pit. It's just, like, pit and then cave past the pit. Yes, correct. Uh, well, I guess if there's a silver lining with Ariana being gone, if I screw this up, nobody's going to laugh at me. Take a couple steps back and then just running jump over the pit. 
I don't you're not gonna be able to make a straight shot for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the map up. I was I was trying to get it where okay. I could pull the map up from last time so you could see where you were. Okay. And I'm not gonna re hide everything, I don't think. So you're gonna get a you're gonna get a nice view of the map. But okay. well I did watch the last episode, so I've seen the map. Oh, you've seen the map, so <laughs> through that anyway. Um, okay. Oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna make that. Uh <laughs> yeah, if you want to put your token, you're uh basically right here yeah okay all right um maps why not use them if we got them right we're just gonna okay flip, flip them back a little bit mm. well since you are Adrastos, sniffing around go ahead since Adrastos you are sniffing around one cool. thing you do get is there is a smell it's death you definitely smell death but something else it's a it's a darker smell um it reminds you of something you've run into before but you can't quite place it but you've you've definitely been around something that's given off this odor before okay uh how deep is this pit i know there's spikes at the bottom but it was like 70 feet if i remember correctly okay so that's not something i can just like slide into well, remembering um, memories of an athlete that he fought in the gladiatorium. Uh, named Ezio. Adrasus is going to try and wall jump. Interesting. Okay, little parkour mm -hmm. movement here. Yeah. <laughs> So shield, javelins, sword on the back, flexing the claws because I'm going to have to like dig into the stone and jump. Okay. Let's have an acrobatics. Could I get away with it being athletics? Since I I'm knew he was going to gonna ask this, and you know what? My <laughs> heart says absolutely. Okay. I appreciate you. You are a kind and just man. <laughs> All right. I'm a pushover, let's be honest. Uh, 14. You run up to this, you leap at the wall to the right-hand side, and you hit it. You push off of that onto the left-hand side, and that's when you see the blood, the ooze, the something that's on that wall. And when you hit it, you know you have no footing. And you begin to slide down the wall. And I am going to need a dexterity saving throw from you, please. Okay. Come on, Adrastos. Uh, 12. You slip and fall. Yeah, it's not too bad. And you are going to take 7 damage from that fall. Okay. As you kind of grip a little bit, slide and claw, but there's nothing to purchase on, and you hit the bottom of this pit. And while you have time to think about what you're going to do at the bottom of this pit, back in the room with the skeletons... Ow! <laughs> I don't know why the map moved. That's very interesting. I just realized the map is not up on the screen for the stream for some reason. What is going on here? I don't know if the battle scene map won't come up. Okay, I'll get back to that. Anyway, you guys are in the room. These skeletons uh, have stepped forward, raised their weapons, and two of them are going to uh, take attacks at Hyrax, the two who are closest to him. One is going to take a swing at him, while the other one is going to stab and attempt to gore him with the weapon. Oh, and I would rather they didn't. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Uh, that first one is going to be a 15. That will not hit. All right. The second one, however, is going to be a 22. Well, okay. I can't deny that hits. All right. And that is going to be a whopping three points piercing damage. Okay. 
as he stabs, stabby stabs with you. That would be the green one and the orange one. The orange one is the one that hit. The blue All one right. is going to move a little bit closer to Ptolemaeus and attempt to slash downwards at him. And that probably is going to be hits. a 19. Yeah, it probably hits, yes. All right. Um, where's my D10? There's my D10. That is going to be nine slashing damage, however. Okay. The skeleton that's dead on the floor is not going to do anything, just in case anybody wondered. Perfect. Brave and mighty Tikaros, the only one who is not afraid of these things. What would you like to do? Yes. I'm going to... Uh, which was the one that Tolly... I would have seen Tolly hit one with his vicious mockery. I want to go for that. That summer. would be the blue one, I believe, is the one he yes. oh, mocked. I would... I might need to move a little so I can see it. Okay. And then I'm going to, again, firebolt. Team. That is a 21 to hit. That's a hit. My God, birthday dice, birthday dice. <laughs> hey. Double nines. I'm not kidding on the damage. Where's the camera for my dice tray? 18 <laughs> fire damage. Awesome. All right. I am a mighty fighter like a Drastos. The bolt shoots forward, hits this creature, and just scorches it. And you get you get that smell of any leftover flesh that might have been on the skeleton burning, burning off, and then charred bone as you basically cook him a little bit on the outside. Anything else you would like to do? That's it for now. I poise ready for my next firebolt. All right. Um, brave and mighty Hyrax. Who's afraid? Uh, I am. I am. I am indeed. All three of those things at once somehow. Um, contradictory as you may seem. I would oh, take a disadvantage if I attacked. Let's see if there are any spells I can use. Uh, your your action should be uh, to attempt to get away because that's what frightened does. Uh, frightened says I can't get closer. It doesn't say I have closer. to run. That's true. Uh, except in some, I think there's some specific ones that have like a special frightened condition. But yeah. uh, I want to take a tax from. Yeah, yeah, I can just disengage and go hide behind something. Um, these guys don't have any ranged <laughs> weapons or anything like that, right? Uh, not that you can see. What is the deal with this pool back here with the bones in it? That is just a vat. Uh, you haven't gotten to take a good look at it. Uh, you just saw that's okay. the basin that they came out of when they entered the room. I see. Okay. Uh, well, if I must run away, then I shall run away. Uh, although I was, uh, I was getting part of inspiration. I might still be able to make it with disadvantage. Um, all right, no, I'm gonna take a stab at orange. Okay. Sorry, sorry for what weapon are what weapon are you gonna to use to do this stabby stab? Uh, with my javelin. Uh, I have another javelin. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Technically, I had five of them. I throw two of them. Uh, so that is going to be fifteen to hit. Actually, that, yeah. That is actually a hit. Wow. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, then. Uh, oh, and with my bonus action, I transfer Hunter's Mark over to Orange as well. Okay. Uh, then. So 2d6 damage, that is 7, plus 3 is 10 piercing damage. All right. And I will also take my extra attack. Um... Because I'm a level 5 ranger, and somehow I forgot that last turn, so I only took I took one less attack than I could have. Oh, well. Um, Phil Mace, your bard inspiration is a D8 now? Is that correct? D8, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, so even with disadvantage, that is still a 12 plus or 16 plus whatever, it doesn't matter. 
uh, dirty 20. Um, All right. With nine piercing damage on that second attack. All right. Very good. You've definitely <clears throat> chipped a couple of bones, maybe cracked a rib. And you know what to heck with it. I am going to move around this guy, so I will take an attack of opportunity from Green. All right. As you step away, Green is going to jab out with its delay. And that is a 15. Nope. Which misses. All right. All right. That's my turn. Very good. Philomaeus. Uh, immediately after listening to that sound, uh, I will just kind of close my eyes a little bit and just be like, Oh my gosh, you need some sort of oil for those joints. That's terrible. That's a terrible sound. And, uh, I need them to get away from me. Um, I'm going to hold out my hands towards the one that slashed at me and with kind of just an open palm uh cast a uh thunderclap okay so that is a constitution saving throw of 15. and that is a fail okay It's not amazing damage. That's three points of damage, but three points of thunder damage. All right. And uh, da, 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 da. I think I am stuck here. I'm going to stay right here. I stand my ground for the first time ever because, you know, nobody else is here in front of me. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that for now. That's my turn. All right. Adrastos, what is happening uh, in your pit? the pit of despair <laughs> where were we oh yes um i'm going to stand up cough a little bit dust myself off walk to the end of the pit i was trying to get to and climb out <laughs> all right uh gonna need an athletics as you climb out of this because it is a stone wall so there's really nothing to dig your claws into as they are not uh, adamantium nope I don't make it. All right. What is your next effort? Uh, well, I, I mean, I guess I would just, I know I don't have unlimited time, but I would attempt to climb out of here with all of my, all of my strength is getting out of this hole in the direction that I think my party went. Okay. Uh, I will let you roll again. If you fail this time, you're going to take more damage because you're going to make it part way up and then fall. Okay. If I fail this time, this dice is retired. <laughs> uh, 14. I'm going to give you good enough. You make it up. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ariana's right. I'm getting fat. Okay. And then he's just going to trundle on down the, the way. Okay. As you climb out and make your way up onto the edge, are you kind of taking a look at anything around you or are you trying to observe what's going on or are you just making your way in? I'm trying to follow the route that my party may have taken. So yeah, I'm I'm keeping my head on a swivel, but I'm also moving forward. Okay. You hear the sound of, of water trickling ahead, um, but you notice all the plants around you, and there are many, they've all wilted and died but as you look back to the other side and you think back to where you first came in, it was green and lush. But everything on this side has died. And it's in various states of decay. Some of it has gone so far, it's turning back to just the the grunge that, you know, carpets the bed of a forest. So because I have become basically like the the god hating Leonin that most Leonin are, and would therefore be like, okay, this is definitely some god's fault. Can I roll to see if I recognize what caused this? Because I think that 
Adrastos's clan would have known about Fariga? Uh, you can roll for it, sure. Okay. Or Farika, or however you pronounce her name. Yeah. What am I rolling? Uh, just uh, roll me, I guess, a history. Okay. In this oh. Case. Oh. 14. Which is what I rolled, and I got really excited, but then realized I have a no modifier. So as as you think back on this, and you're trying to go through, you know, which of the gods could be responsible for this? I mean, you know, you know, Nylea and nymphs and the gods of the field. And you do remember a tale of a a group at one point outside of Setessa uh, that apparently had gone to help rescue a lost child or something. And in their attempt to rescue, they, they unfortunately ended up killing a nymph. And when they did, the crops around Setessa, they, they just wilted in sorrow for this loss uh, and in basically Nylea's anger. And as you look at this and the rapid decay that is going on in front of you, that's the first thing that comes to mind is... Is this something, another vengeance against a nymph? Or, you know, is the nymph that's responsible for this area that was keeping it so flourished? Have they died? If only that group had had a Leonin telling them not to do that. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been something? <laughs> Wouldn't that have been something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I will trundle on. As you make your way down into the cave a little bit deeper, you come to a stream that at one point, it looks like it may have been the, the feeding stream in this cave, but it's now this muddy, murky mess, and there are things moving in it, but they're definitely not fish. They almost look like some kind of large worms. I'm not messing with that. Mm -mm. As you make your way in further, you come to another pit. This one is only about 10, maybe 12 feet long, uh, and there's a clear shot to it. Okay. But you see on the other side, uh, just in front of this rock that's in the center, the, the cave seems to split around this rock. You see the remains of what looks like a goblin. I suppose this is the way I should be going, then. Why didn't they wake me up? And then I, I will take a running long jump, which I can easily do because my strength score is higher than 10. <laughs> All right. No problem. You make it across. Okay. Um, and then I guess I'll just... I'm not really going to interact with the goblin, I don't think. I'm just going to keep going towards the back of the cave. Okay. As you make your way into this area, it obviously tightens down a little bit, and you're going to kind of have to shimmy across the wall, which is fine until you reach the halfway mark around this. And then the darkness that has been permeating the, the cave, and you know, you're in a very you're in the end of this cave. It's very dark in here. It starts to move. In fact, it seems to detach from the wall and almost reach out for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, I'm... I guess I'm feeling a little bit... A little bit comedic about my death at this point because I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say, as the darkness is reaching towards me, you have me at a disadvantage. <laughs> Hoping that it is sentient and will speak with me. One moment, please. <laughs> please roll me a persuasion. Okay. Natural one. <laughs> as you stand there ahead of you about 
three feet ahead. As I mentioned, the wall kind of reaches out, kind of like this, this arm that stretches towards you. And as it stretches, it begins to thin along the, the, the limb of it. And it stretches so far that it breaks and it drops and splats at your foot. And the darkness just makes a small puddle and kind of splatters little pieces off. And those little pieces begin to inch their way rolling towards your foot. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've seen Evil Dead. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to try and like move, like move them with my foot and scoop my way out. Get to the other side. So you're going to try and kick at it with your foot? Yes. All right. As I have said before, I have never claimed that Adrastus is a smart man. Do you wear any armor on your feet, or is it just your bare feet? Uh, he has them uh, wrapped with cloth, but other than okay. that, it's just bare feet. All right. You kick forward, and as you do, just as your foot is about to reach it, you could have sworn you saw as this bit of the darkness sprung forward into your foot. And it attaches itself to the cloth and begins to spread. And you begin to see as it eats away. And the cloth is, you know, you've got your red cloth. So it's, the color just slowly starts to fade to gray as it begins to spread. It's like there's a small ring around it. And as it grows, the gray spreads. Well, as soon as I can get out from between these rocks and get to the other side, I'm going to tear that off of my foot. All right. Uh, I'm going to need a dexterity check to see how fast you do that. Okay. Just a check, not a save. Uh, do a Doesn't save, make a difference. Yeah. It's do the same save. number. It's, but... it's, yeah. Uh, three. I'm getting new dice. Okay. Three. You move back for this. And as you're trying to move away, you begin to feel the cloth separating. And as you look down, it's made its way through the cloth. It has touched the edge of your fur. And the fur where it has touched has just like wilted. And then you start to see as each individual hair begins to turn gray and black as it moves in towards your foot. All right, am I out from behind the rock? Because the whole point was to get out from behind the rock before I went for my foot. I've started a timer. What would you like to do? A am I out from behind the rock, though? Because you that was what I was You're out from behind the rock, okay. but this... The then I'm going to shave through. the hair off of the back of my leg with <laughs> my sword to shoot. <laughs> I'm not going to cut my foot off, but I don't want the hair to touch me. Let's see if you can do this quick enough. Give me a dexterity save, please. 14. You slice and you hit just ahead of this. And it's almost as though as your blade cuts, you see as the darkness kind of cringes back for a moment as your blade cuts through. And as the hairs hit the ground, like very old, something that had been rotting for years, when they hit, they just shatter. And little pieces of black are speckled all about the ground around you. And they slowly start to move together, reforming the blob and moving towards your leg. I will roar using my daunting roar ability. I will <laughs> roar at the ooze. And you hear from somewhere deeper in the cave. Interesting. These games do not suit me, spirit. Spirit. I am no mere spirit. Let it touch you. Let's see what it does to your skin. No. I'm going to go deeper into the cave towards the source of the voice. Say that again. 
I'm going yeah. deeper in the cave towards the source of the voice. Okay. So you're going to have to navigate around. And to do this, you're going to have to go back through that narrow rock. You went through oh, on so the right side. Are you going to try going on the other? Or? So I'm not over here. No. Because no, that's you said where I was you, trying to go. I thought you said you backed up. So no, I no, was I was assuming... trying to go forward. Ah. Through it. Well, that would be a totally different story. <laughs> okay. That's cool. I will amend to that. Okay. The walls around you begin to drip and hang, and they're slowly stretching down these globules towards you. And you know if they stretch too thin, they're just going to fall. Yeah, I'm running, like, full tilt on all fours. Yeah, forward into the room ahead? Yeah. You move into that room, and you just, you get about maybe a foot in, and you stop because you realize this room the entire floor is covered in this mess. Right where you're at, you can see the remains of some plants. But at the edge of that, it is like somebody took a plant and just sheared it off. And it is just black on the floor. Except for one ring. About... Roll them all? Five feet into... I knew he was going to do that. Five foot in <laughs> diameter in which stands a creature that looks like a snake with a humanoid upper half. And because you did the role earlier, from your knowledge of the gods, you recognize this as Farika. <laughs> what have I done to insult you, goddess? Well, you haven't let it eat you yet. So let's see what happens. Oh, 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 I need to, I need to roll a wisdom save, Tam. I'm about to kill Adrastos. I need to roll a wisdom save. Okay. <laughs> Please do. Okay. It's an 11. Do you think that's good enough to stop me from acting on instinct? I mean, normally you. if you're doing an if or else, it's 10 and below is a fail. Anything above 10 is a success. So okay. I'll leave that up to you. But <laughs> Then I do not throw my javelin at the god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to, as you take a breath for a moment in your anger, and you're kind of contemplating this idea, you do realize that your left hand lying on the ground, you see three crossbow bolts. Each one of them has a very dark black tip. It looks very similar, and it, it takes you a moment, and then you recognize that material that you all had found on those statues that you found in the woods. That's what it looks like. Have you taken my comrades, goddess? Well, they're not yours for me to take, but they volunteered to do a small task for me. And if I wish to assist them? Wish all you want. I'll make a deal. Place your hand in the puddle of the darkness. And then I'll send you to them. Hand goes in. No more words. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> it you is still... not the hand wrapped in gold. It is the hand wrapped in red. All right. You plunge your hand into this. And immediately, it is... You've seen... Hungry animals in the various games, and they throw in meat, and the animals just dive on it with no thought other than devour. And the darkness seizes onto your hand. And your hand goes from a searing hot pain to a feeling of absolute numb. 
and you begin to see the color fading, starting at your paw, moving up your arm. As you lose all color in it, and it just turns to this muted, colorless gray. I grit my teeth so that she can't see me in pain, and I say, well, I did as you asked. Well, I would love to watch, but promise is a promise. And the light fades, and you find yourself in a dark hallway. And you will be right here on this map. Okay. Do I have a permanent injury that I need to mark on my players? And uh, my players you cannot can... feel your hand, and we will get into that as it continues. Because right now, it's still eating you. So. Oh, it's still my turn. Sorry, I thought we were we had moved off. I, I uh, was I was just waiting to see if you had anything else you wanted to say about that. If not, I am going to jump back down to this room. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I, <laughs> I care more about my party than my hand. That's a good thing. Well, or good now anyway. Anyway, we'll get back to that. Ah, uh, the skeleton that is standing, the blue one that is standing to the right of Ptolemaeus makes a clacking noise with its mouth. All three of them kind of, you know, make clacks with their arms. And then they attack again. Ptolemaeus. I think we're losing him. <laughs> Ptolemaeus. Somebody smack him one. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> the one next to you, the one in blue, is going to first slash with his glaive, and then stab at you with it. The slash is going to miss horribly, I can guarantee. Does a 14 hit? 14 does hit me. All right. The jab is going to hit you for 5 piercing damage. Yeah. Can I... Yeah, I'll, I'll, take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. The green one having seen Hyrax move away, decides Ptolemaeus is close enough, and it does the same thing, attempting to okay. slash and jab. Oh my gosh. The slash! Okay, first off, that dice is out of here. <laughs> uh, does a 16 hit? Uh... Yeah, sure. That is going to be four piercing damage as he jabs you with his glaive. Got it. You can't oh, be slashed, quick, but you can be jabbed. Yeah, I just remembered. Did did the uh, did the guy from from last turn hit use roll with disadvantage? I did actually. Yes. Wow. An extra okay. dice. All right, in cool. there. So it's always it's always the slash that. that That's why I didn't it. blame the dice the first <laughs> time. Okay. <laughs> Because, you know, I was like, it wasn't its fault. It was with disadvantage. But the second time, dang it, the second time was too much. <laughs> I was not going to allow that. The orange one is going to uh, do a similar attack on Hyrax. Go for it. By similar, I mean, he's going to actually, that's a 20 on the uh, glaive. So I assume that's a hit. So he's actually going to hit with the slash. Oh. Which is going to be 10 slashing damage, but he is going to miss miserably with the jabby jab. Oh, did you say 10? I said 10. That is oh, cool. I don't appreciate that very much. I mean, <laughs> I'm still okay right now, but that hurts. If you would like, there is a complaint department. Uh, yeah. Feel free I would to, like file to file your file complaint. complaint. Little did you know that that, that, uh, that filing cabinet just leads to a trash can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shredder on the other side. It's actually a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a paper eating mimic all right with uh those attacks out of the way and the clacking done 
Dikaros, what would you like to do? Oh, I am now. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, address us, go ahead and roll initiative and let's get it in there too. And we'll bring you in in the next round. Uh, okay, take rest. Go ahead. I am both angry and bored by this. I'm going to look at the two skeletons that are laying into Tolly and just, I'm going to clasp my little necklace to try and get some fury. And I want to okay. spend a sorcery point and have two firebolts come out of my hands at each of those that are attacking Tolly awesome. with a little scream. So this is for blue. That'll be a 14 to hit. That's a hit. Yes. This would be for green. I'll do them both at once. That's a 13 to hit. That's a miss. Damn it. But blue. Now you, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did it. We know. That is a whopping nice. seven points of damage on blue. Fire. Blue catches more flame and he's beginning to look more scarred black bone than white bone. But, you know. Yeah. He's still up. And I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to stay here and I'm just going to ready myself. All right. Irax. Right. So, uh, Let's see. One sec. I can just get. Okay. Um. I guess Hyrax has got to keep wailing on that orange one to see if he can take him out. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna jab at him. There's not a lot more interesting I can do. I think he's still hit with my hunter's mark at the moment. Yep. So at least do extra damage. Um. And that is a 17 to hit. That's with... a hit. Yep. Hold on. With uh, 13 piercing damage on him. Nice. How is he looking? Uh, you hit him with this, and it goes through, and it breaks a couple of ribs free. It actually shatters part of his backbone. Uh, so not a lot holding him together there, but he is still up at the moment. All right, pull back, go for a second jab, aiming for the head this time. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm afraid anymore either, so. Yep, yep, you're not afraid. So close. It's a uh, 25 to hit. That's a with, hit. Uh, 14 piercing damage on that one. Uh, explain what happens when you defeat this creature. So like I said, he pulled back out, and with the second jab is aiming for the, it seems like the head, but he actually goes just a little bit uh, south of that and severs the uh, connection where its skull rests and its skull goes flying off. Um, and then he, uh, with with disciplined uh, reflexes, just immediately pulls back, puts up his shield in preparation for possibly another attack. All right. Excellent. Aldemaeus. And for, yeah, oh, sorry. Like, He'll take a step back as well. So we're gonna see. Okay, very good, very good. Hello, Mace. Okay. Um, I'm going to wipe a little bit of blood from my mouth, look at the blue one, and just go, don't don't bother raising that glaive. Just just do this motion. This motion works. This doesn't seem like it works very well. And I will do another vicious mockery on the blue one. All right. Uh... Same 15 wisdom saving throw. That is a fail. Oh, please do a little bit more damage this time. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit more damage. That's seven points of damage. What was it you said to him as part of your... Uh, uh to, to no longer slash. Slashing doesn't help. You say that, and he looks at his blade, and he goes and pulls it back like he's going to slash with it, and as his arms come back, they disconnect. The blade drops to the ground, and he looks at you, and then crumbles. I just look at the green one, and he's like, I, I told him. Uh, and, yeah, I'll just stay there for one more turn. All right. 
Very good. I, I love the fact that Adrastos's uh initiative roll came in right at the end, which is great. I was going to pick him up at the next round, so he'll just be at the bottom. The skeleton, uh, seeing his partners uh, crash to the ground, opens his mouth as if to scream, but the only thing that comes out is this horrendous clacking noise as its teeth chatter against each other, and it goes all in, swinging as hard as it can and jabbing in towards Ptolemaeus. Once again, the slashing is going to miss completely. <laughs> Not a chance. The jabby jab on the other way is going to make a connection because that's an 18. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. And that's going to be a whopping five piercing damage. Take that as well. And it that leans hurts. in towards you and, and just gets as close as you can it can and just gnashes its teeth at you as it holds the blade into your gut. God, that's still stale. <laughs> Addressed us. How much of my arm can't I feel? I would say it's up to the wrist at this point, and it's turning gray. It's not proceeding super quick, but it's definitely gray moving upwards. Okay, so that's my sword hand. So I'm going to draw my sword with my left hand, mm -hmm. put it into my hand, and tie my sword to my hand. Okay. So I don't have to grip it. It's just Understood. in my arm. Understood. Um, and then I'm going to run. I'm going to draw my shield and run as fast okay. as I can. Uh, it's a fairly straight hallway. It runs for quite a distance. What is your run speed? <clears throat> uh, 35. So with a dash, it's 70. That is going to put you down here. And you reach a point where you're almost to a bend that hang hangs off to the left. Okay. I will... I'm going to continue running until I get to where my party is. Okay. Or where I think they are. All right. Very good. Ticaros. And as I'm running, oh, I'm yelling. Sorry. I'm yelling out for them. I'm like, Tikaros, Vara, Ptolemaeus, Hyrax. Uh, to see if I can hear them or can get them right. to hear me. Knowing where you're at and knowing this place, I'm going to say they couldn't quite hear you yet, so I won't have them roll perception because it won't echo that far. Tikaros, okay. you're up. Okay, I am going to move in a little protectively next to Vara and just kind of right next to her, try and shield her at this moment and just unleash my firebolt fury at this last remaining skeleton. All right. Oh, no. My birthday dice are failing me. <laughs> That's a great big nine. That I got is all discombobulated. That is a miss. <laughs> Shoot straight past. But. I'm protecting Vara at this moment. I'm starting to look down and I'm about to you know, help her out. All right. That's it for me. Excellent. Irax. Uh, hi, Rex. Uh, let's see. There's just one guy left. How is he looking, by the way? A little rough. A little rough. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take a gamble here. It's probably not going to pay off, but I'm going to do it. Um, I am going to, first of all, as a bonus action, I'm going to transfer my Hunter's Mark to, to the last remaining guy in green. Um, okay. Put my Javelin back, reach for my belt, pull out a dart, and I'm going to go for the sharpshooter shot and see if I can finish this. Uh, chances are, the, the odds are against me, but I'm going to try it. Um, is that much small? All right, so I believe that's only gonna be a plus one to hit. Uh, yeah, all right, let's try it. <laughs> that's a nat 20. Nice, let's go. Uh, I'll, so. I'll let that hit. You know, it's okay. All right. Um, so that is, it's it's a. Uh, how do how are we handling crits again? Is it we rolled the dice twice? It's full, full damage, damage plus dice roll. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, full damage plus dice roll. Max plus dice. Yep. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Well, that <laughs> is going to be uh, let's see, uh, a twenty three piercing damage for starters. Okay. Um, and then to roll my dice, 
That is uh, 32. <laughs> well done. Um, explain what happens when you utterly demolish this last one. <laughs> well, like I say, pull out the dart, focus, and then with just a single throw, it just whirls through the air. And I mean, how else to describe it other than just, I'll say it smashes through his midsection, goes somewhere different than the head. Um, and uh, everything else just sort of scatters around it. It's almost like a bowling ball hitting some pins. So <laughs> he just manages to find, with his with his focused eyes, he finds one weak spot where if, you, if it just disconnects, everything else collapses afterward. All right. It falls to the ground, all of the skeletons down. You hear this slight buzzing electrical kind of a noise. And on the ground, in between the two pillars, appears a bowl with an emblem of Keranos on it. Oh. It seems we've obtained another item. At least another bowl. And the first thing I'll do is turn around and make sure that Vara is okay. She's breathing. She is just not conscious. Well, okay, so I'm not going to be able to carry anybody. Took a little bit more damage than I expected, but I'll carry me, then I'll get the bowl. I'll walk up and, and grab. You said it's over here, right? Yeah, it's in between those two pillars. Right. Okay. Um,. Yeah, I'll go up there and grab the bowl, and while I'm doing it, I'll just turn around and just be like, Tigros, those, those fireball bolts are, were something else. They definitely get coming into your own, huh? Yeah, I don't know, Tolly. Something about all of you getting hurt, it's channeling something in me. I can feel myself changing, getting stronger. Maybe we could do the, the getting stronger part without us getting hurt next time, yes? I oh, like that's gonna happen. <laughs> but I love your positivity. <laughs> well, <laughs> look, I gotta look look at the bright side sometimes. And as I'm grabbing the bowl, can I now walk up to inspect this? Uh, I wouldn't say this color is water. No, it's kind of a is. purplish... It... As you look at it, it's got a, a purplish color to it, and it kind of matches some of the, the color in your hair or the okay. constellations in the Nyx. You, you kind of see that blend in it, and it's got a quality that's it's not quite water. Okay. Um, so it's, as you said, Tam, it's been a month. Can I remember... What elements there were on some of these pillars and these bolts? Because <laughs> we've got the fire one. I remember. Starting, starting, the, starting from the the leftmost to the rightmost. Now go, I'll go top, bottom, top, bottom, across. Okay. You have a cloud. Okay. Tree. Water. So some wavy lines. A snowflake. So ice. Okay. Obviously, a depiction of fire. The moon. The sun. And lightning. Okay. Uh, yes, Adrestos. Are we out of initiative now? You are out of initiative, but you're still okay, so running I'm, your way along. So. I'm still running full tilt and yelling, just, yep. just to put, put that into perspective where I end up. Now and I'm kind of tracking where I think you would be along with what they're doing. So I will let you know okay. when they can hear you. So, and when uh, you see something, you're, you're kind of doing the corkscrew right now. Just saying. Yes. Uh, what was that? <laughs> oh, I was just kidding. So I'd probably hear him before everyone else. So just saying. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, I'll grab the symbol of Kernos and just look at everybody and just, I'm guessing this is probably going to work for the storms one, the, the lightning one at least. As for... I'm not sure this is water. 
I'm not sure if this is anything else, too. Ooh. I want to take a look okay. at it. Can I see through this purplish, um, kind of hazy liquid? If you would like to uh, give me a perception check, we'll see what you can see underneath it. I'd also like to take a look at it. Okay. Can I just help help Hyrax? <laughs> yeah. We all help Hyrax. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look that I built a hyper-specialized character. <laughs> That's fine. Roll it with advantage. <clears throat> So with advantage, that is 24. As you look at this and you kind of maybe stir it around with a knife or a dagger or something, maybe one of their glaives, that's up to you. Um, it's It's got a, a murky quality to it. And if you've ever seen, like if somebody puts glitter in in kind of an oily substance, how it kind of flows the glitter around if you move it, Kind of got that has that kind of a a movement to it, and you can see down. This thing is probably four feet deep, uh, so it's like a you know just a, a hole in the floor about four feet deep with filled with this stuff. Uh, you don't see anything particularly in it, and the bottom of it appears to be stone. Mm. Can I reach out and just? cast a little dancing light action into the pool, like four feet right to okay. the bottom of that depth and just put four little lights at the bottom on each corner. Okay. There's a roll. I'm nervous. Yep. As your magic activates underneath this, the water churns angrily spins and kind of rises up and begins to form a face which looks oh, steps back stepping back and then slowly begins to form into a body no and like a skeleton factory here <laughs> <laughs> jesus it's made out of 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 water um, and appears to be, I mean, a creature of some sort. It looks roughly humanoid. And it is going to take a step out of this basin onto the ground in front of you. And I'm trying to find the token for it. Bear with me. <laughs> it is being it's very... A, it's a fluffy puppy. No, it's not a fluffy puppy. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry, roll 20 is like, I don't know, are you guys getting lagged? Because roll 20 is lagging for me, so. In a very bad way. Please let me do this, roll 20. Comes and goes. I don't know, I don't understand. I, yeah, there's something weird going on. There's something wrong with the internet. <laughs> if it would let me drag the token over there, I would be done. There. Oh, great. That's the token it gives me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thank it you, is Roll20. Blue. It is the same color as the water. It is oddly humanoid hmm. looking. Well, that, hmm. that, that it's just funny. It, it's, it's exactly the description I gave. So you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. But, but the picture, the picture for it's a lot different than what it actually does, which is kind of interesting. The creature steps out, looks forward, and says, "In primordial, do any of you speak primordial by chance?" Ooh, 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 let me check. Let me check. Ooh. Oh, nope, I missed that one. Damn. No. I also missed. And says, one. Are you sure it's not Sylvan or Draconic? I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's Primordial. Ah, uh, well. Pretty sure that does not sound Sylvan. I would know. <laughs> Damn. Oh, no. Wait, oh, wait. No. That's, that's Eastern Sylvan. I know that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, would you like to re-roll initiative since you've now pissed off this <gasps> creature too? <laughs> no, I was just trying to see in the pool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wow, thanks, Tikaros. Well, good news, Adrastos, you have something to punch. Uh, yeah. How far would I have made it by this point, Tam? Oh, no. I was just about to get to that. Uh, give me just a second to finish this roll here. All right. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Oh, damn. I'm doing, I'm doing good, good with initiative this game. I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were going to go right back into combat. Could I have just healed myself at some point? Please just like a cure wounds <laughs> on myself real quick. We're not in initiative, so if you wanted to do that, you could have time to do that. Uh, has right, everybody thanks. else rolled initiative? Because I'm not seeing them. So uh, I, I I rolled it, but it's not in in the. I have I got okay. a five. All right, so let me uh, let me add these Ptolemaeus. Oh, I'm just oh, 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 oh. Mine came through. I yes. think. Not twenty. Adrastos. The kitten is no longer playing. Yes. <laughs> okay, so do we have everybody in here now? We have everybody in here You now. were playing before? Why were you playing? It was life and death. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> so to answer your question, um, Adrastos, you're running around this thing, you're corkscrewing around the corners in this, and you come into a room that has these recesses in it and pillars and symbols of the gods. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, continuing your run forward, you see lots of closed doors, but you see one open door right here. Are you going to turn down that hallway, I assume? Yes, still shouting. Great. Uh, as you turn down that hallway and you move, your sword now tied in your hand. You know, you don't have great control over the hand because it's tied to it. And you kind of scrape the wall a little bit. And that's the moment you hear this strange kind of a tick noise. And as you look at your hand, you see that all your claws on that hand have fallen <gasps> off. In fact, uh, part of your fingers went with them. And the gray has moved up now to about this far on your arm. So I'm, I'm going to say, Tam, I, thank you for telling me, the player, that that is, I'm registering that. Adrastos does not notice that. <laughs> Adrastos is very single-minded. Got it. No problem. No. If he can't feel it, it is an obstacle at this point. The searing pain until, has stopped. It's sword. just a growing numbness that moves up your arm at this point. Until his sword falls out of his hand, he's not going to stop moving. All right. And even then, he's just going to one piece it into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Adrastos is still running like hell. Tikaros, that means you're up as this very oh. large creature made of liquid looks angrily at oh, you. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh, I'll look at Tolly and I'll say, I can run fast. Do you want to give me the ball? Should I take the ball back and get us out of this room? I think we need to deal with this regardless. Why are they always unfriendly? And I'll turn to the creature and lash out with my fire. All right. It sounds menacing and awful. 16 to hit with my firebolt. That is a hit. Oh, okay. Okay. Be interesting to see what 10 points of fire damage does to this thing. Your fire flies forward and hits this thing and hits the water of it and just kind of fizzles. Oh. Okay, okay. And I'll back up and I'll again stand protectively near Vara. And that's it for me at the moment. All right. Irax. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I crap. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> I'm going to run and take cover behind one of these pillars. And then, because I am a 
the red ambusher. Uh, I should be able to attack three times. Um, so I'm going to make all three of those attacks. Um, dart attacks using sharpshooter and bank on at least one of them hitting. Uh, but first I am going to use a bonus uh, action to cast Hunter's Mark and then okay. I attack action. All right, let's go. Let's see what happens. Um, roll with these. Um, so there's one, two, and three. All right. So that is, first of all, a dirty 20 to hit. All right, that's a hit. A seven to hit. That's a miss. Or, yeah. <laughs> and then, I, and then, uh, but I'll, I'll sorry, I'll, let me go ahead and roll the damage for the other one. Um, I probably should have done that real quick before I announce what I got for that last one, which is probably also going to miss. Uh, um, that is so. Five plus ten plus five is uh, twenty piercing damage with that first one that hit. Uh, okay, it's unfortunate that the second one missed. Um, and then that last one is a fourteen to hit. Uh, that's a hit. Wow. Okay. Um. Is that the one with the that, extra Gloomstalker damage? That is the one with the extra Gloomstalker damage. So that is actually, um, uh, it's also, if uh, I also did specify they are all sharpshooter attacks. Uh, so that okay. is eight plus five is 13, plus seven is 20, plus 10 is uh, 30 piercing damage on that last attack. All right. Are any of these magical attacks? I don't believe so. I'm just trying to clarify. Uh, the hunter's mark damage should technically be magical piercing damage. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how sense. to mark which one of those is which on each. I probably should have been keeping track of that. <laughs> I'll average it out. It's good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah, I've, I've got a, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of room to play with for hit points, so we're good. <laughs> oh boy! Okay, sure, whatever you say. Uh, yeah, so I did that, and then I'm going to quickly duck back behind this pillar, and right. that's my turn. That's all I did. Very good. Is it very right. good? It doesn't feel very good. So is this where everybody is everybody's token exactly where they are located? Because I know there'd been movement closer to the cask and everything. Okay. Cool. Yes. The creature is going to flow forward. It doesn't really walk. It has legs, but it more flows than takes a step. And it is going to surround Ptolemaeus. And Ptolemaeus, I need a constitution saving throw, please. Excellent. Amazing. Awesome. Okay. All right. That's not going to be great. Oh, that was a 16? 16? A 16? Yeah. All right. You feel as this thing kind of all around your body, this tingling feeling as though it's trying to jab into you. Oh, its good. Being. And it's. It tries to get hold of you, but is unable to do so. What is this, like a liquid Iron Maiden? Guess you'll have to fail that save next time and find out. Probably no, I don't <laughs> want to fail that save. <laughs> <laughs> but with wow. that, Ptolemaeus. Wait a minute, what's your, what did you roll, Ptolemaeus? I got zero for your initiative. I, I said five. Right. I said five. Okay, well, it's still pretty low, so you're still at the bottom of the order. It works out. Yeah. It was okay, Ptolemaeus, you're inside this creature. You're up. What would you like to do? Could could I get out? 
you can at all sure could i try to yeah you you can oh. you can move you're free to move oh. at the moment it's just okay, you've got I'm... this surrounding you fill all these pins and needles around you i would think my first uh instinct would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get the yeah, hell out of here yeah. i'm just gonna burst out of it okay. and i'll just be like take on so second thought oh yeah yeah I, I think i think we need to get the bowl out of here and um yeah i think yeah, i'm still f quite injured so are you going to how far away from you're getting out of it are you moving 10 feet away from it because it looks to me like uh, you've moved out of melee distance no i think i think i'm going to use my action to disengage when i'm okay, running cool. out thank you and then i'm just going to make my full movement from here out of here i th think that's what i'm going to do all right um yeah i'll, I'll just as i'm walking out i'm pretty sure if, if if there's pins and needles did it at least kind of like scratch me in any way as i'm walking out or running out of you, this thing when you burst out of this thing you don't feel that, like it's penetrated anywhere but you have little drops of like it purplish ooze on you so it seems to have left this residue on you so you're you're cut you're damp <laughs> oh damp gross damp damp of purple goo and my own blood from getting stabbed a couple times great that's that's fine yeah um with that being said then i will do exactly that uh and i'll just be like don't let it engulf you. Let's just keep moving backwards and get to a bigger place before we can fight it. And that'll be the end of my turn. All right. Adrastos. Well, the stupid token looks like an Iron Maiden too now. <laughs> I know, it's so great. I'm, I was a little upset with the token Five, at first, but 10, I'm like, you know, it actually 15, 20, fits. 25, 30... <laughs> Uh, you would be, if you're running full tilt, uh, you would be right here in front of this, uh, room with fire. I counted it out. Still running, still shouting for my friends. Uh, as you're running down the hallway, you pass this room, uh, with flames <laughs> bursting out of it. But you can hear the noise ahead of you, and if you're still yelling, they can now hear you. I am. <clears throat> All right. What are you yelling? I'm yelling their names. Okay. You hear somebody down the hallway, your names, your names. Ha, ha, ha. I don't get it, but whatever. Must be some Leonin thing. Definitely sounds like a Drastos, though. And I'll just, <laughs> uh, I'll just mention, we're around the corner. Just be careful coming in there. There's, there's some sort of liquid creature. And that's all I can say in, in the, the three seconds of time. <laughs> that you've got. All right. Yeah. All right. Take a rest. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. I oof. I'm a little terrified of this creature and what I'm gonna do? What, what am I gonna do? Oh my god, we've gotta just attack it. I'm gonna attack it. Tam, I'm all gonna right. send some I'm gonna all right, fire's not working. I realize it fizzled. So I'm going to cast one of my fabulous magic missiles directly into it. The torso okay. just going for the largest piece of its mass. So that will be just regular first level. See how this goes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 11 points of force damage. All right. Better than nothing. The missiles hit, and you can see as they blast little bits of this liquid out of it. And as the liquid hits the ground, it just kind of starts slowly being drawn back into the, the little puddles, not the whole creature, start being drawn back into that basin in oh. the floor. Oh. oh, good. Good. That's good. Keep hitting it, I say out loud. And... Uh, with my move, actually, Tam, 
would I be able to use my move to take Vara a little bit with me, or would that be like action E? You can drag her a little bit. I'll put you at half movement. Okay. For dragging okay. her. So if I can do that, <clears throat> 15, I could get Vara to here, okay. like right where Tolly, like I could catch up to Tolly with All Vara right. and just get her out of the danger a bit. How's that? And that's it. That's it for me. Yep. All right. All right. Right. So uh, everybody else is running away, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, let's see. But I'm going to get further than everyone else. So <laughs> that. I have Man. no allegiance to these people. I'm going to run like hell. I have a little bit of allegiance, but we're all running. Um, uh, yeah. Can we close that door? The door slid out of place, so it's not visible anymore. So. Uh, oh, no. Okay. Not necessarily. Okay. Well, yep. Just going to run then, I guess. All right. That's, uh, I mean, I could dash, but I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah. I'm going to instead use my action to cast Cure Wounds on. Who's, who's the most hurt? Don't worry about me. If I, if I need, if I need it, I'll just Cure Wounds myself. I'm okay. okay. Uh, then I guess I'll cast it on myself. I'll just, I can't be bothered to pick up dice. I'm just going to roll. Seven, and that'll put me back at one health. All right. Right here. All right. The creature moves forward and engulfs Vara, and I hate to do this on a player who's not here, but... Who would like to make a constitution saving throw for Vara? God damn it. Oh, no. What's her modifier? I'll roll him with my... I'll roll him with my uh, hopefully I can get that for you. Give me just a second. Modifier? Nah, just roll a straight one. Who cares? Uh, just a second. All right. Well, I'll just roll the die, and then you can tell me yeah, what, that's, what that's it is after idea. modifier. Because it may just be I so rolled... horrible it doesn't even matter. I rolled the 15 without any modifiers, so we'll see what happens. That's going to nice. be good enough anyway. I don't even need the modifier. So You're welcome, Moira. I saved you. <laughs> <laughs> For a turn, we have to get her out. <laughs> one turn. Yeah, we'll be fine. Ptolemaeus. Oh. Uh, I'm going to hand the symbol of Kyranos and the bowl over to Tikaros and just be like you run faster get it to the, the bowl and if necessary if if we might be able to close this door behind us right now for for just a bit just move this the fireball away from the statue and see if that closes the door. And I am <sighs> shit. That's one one. That's one half of what my what I want to do. The other half, I I um. Hmm. Is it possible for me to? I'm going to walk or run through around it. Uh, I just spoke, so I can still use my action to disengage. I'm still going to disengage. Okay. Um... And one, two, three, four, five. I'll stay here in this area. And I'm going to try to get this thing's attention somehow. Okay. Uh, what 
Well, well let's pick that up on your next turn since you did a disengage to get over there. Because that would take uh, your action. I, I, can I use my bonus action for anything? Uh, sure. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll just use my bonus action to, to healing word myself. Um, okay. And hopefully, in some sort of presence of, of magic, um, this thing changes its tune a little bit. That's just eight points of healing. Uh, I did, did it at second level for eight points of healing. All right. And Excellent. yeah. Healing, not damage. God damn it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Very good. With that, Adrastos. As you make it a little bit further, this sword in your hand begins to uh, move a little bit looser as the bindings begin to loosen as your fingers and the flesh on the back of your hand rots off and falls away. The gray has now moved up closer to your elbow, so it's about mm, two-thirds of the way up your arm. Okay, well... I think I would have noticed it by now. I would think possibly. Um, okay. Adrastos is going to take the sword out of his ruined right hand with his left hand. And he is going to... Tell me how you take this sword out of your hand. Are you trying to grab it by the hilt, or are you grabbing the blade and pulling it out? I'm grabbing the blade. As you away. pull it loose, you notice that the handle has lost all color towards the hilt, and the back part of it is black, covered in this black material. Okay, well, gripping the blade... Aiming about an inch above the rod, I cut off my arm. All right. Not a super easy thing to do. You said you're going a little bit above it there. Uh-huh. Um, I will give you the option to roll for it to see if you make it, but I'm perfectly happy to say you are a warrior. You would be able to do this. Nope, I don't need to roll for it. I'm All right. just doing it. All right. And then I will drop my ruined sword. Okay. And okay. I'm just now bleeding profusely from my arm. Yes. There is a fire right next to you, by the way. I was about to say, you could probably <laughs> cauterize the wound right now. If would you really need would I be to. smart enough for that to work? Like, I'll take the damage if I know that'll give, stop the give bleeding. Me a, give me a medicine check. Let's see. Because if he thinks that'll work, he'll do it. Um, 14. You can see the stone has a slight glow to it from the heat of this room being constantly on. So you just jam the stub of your arm into the stone. It sizzles. Horrible smell of burnt hair and burnt flesh. But you're able to stop the bleeding. All right, then, uh, for my last... For my last thing I'll do, I will draw a javelin off of my back in my left hand, and I will move 30, 35 feet towards my friends. All right. I'll let you move your token there. All right. Uh, Tikaros. Icarus. And I would Just not have done that quietly. I would have definitely like yelled out. In pain. <laughs> <laughs> I hear this roar that's louder than your Adrastos? daunting roar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a lot going on. I would yell out, 
at hearing Adrastos, I'd just yell out, Adrastos! And then I'd turn back to this thing engulfing Vara in front of me and I would scream Vara's name. And then it's time for the big guns. I saw I hurt you before. Now it's time for my force missiles. And I'll just unleash third level. So five darts of my magic missile energy straight into this creature. Okay. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten, fourteen. Fifteen points of force damage. That is going to okay. While his size has not diminished, he's still large. He looks more hollow as you see these pieces of him blasted out his back. Unfortunately, some of it is going to splatter across Tullabaeus as it gets blasted out the back of him. But the droplets that form onto the ground are just like drawn as though something's pulling them back into that basin on the floor. And okay. if you, as dark and purple as this creature looked at the beginning it's now a lighter purple because more light shows through because it's it's basically hollow on the inside oh yeah yes. i should ask having dealt what would have been so much damage with my darts could i have noticed is magic the only thing that seems to harm it at all yeah you're you're kind of noticing that magical things seem to make a big difference here okay it's not it's not and not it, not it all magic like to me it seems like immunity is that right uh, there is some immunity to some things, yes. Oh, no. So, yeah, that would have been 50 piercing damage with my darts, and I don't think I did anything except the Hunter's Mark damage. That's wonderful. Oh. Okay. Yeah, well, you you, yeah. you would say, I would say if you're observing this, Hyrax, because you're a very perceptive person, you would have noticed that fire seems to do absolutely nothing. It, it is immune to fire. Okay, I see. Yeah, you would have seen Tikaros, like, you've seen her just use fire all the time you've known her, and she just suddenly switched yep. from her fire, and she's just pumping these little magical darts now. So you would have totally yep. picked up on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's it. I'm holding my ground, and I'm saying, hit it with magic. We can do this. And that's my turn. All right. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, Hyrax does not have a variety of ways to attack with magic. He does not have any magical weapons. Um, but it seems like this thing is not going to stop chasing us. He still has Hunter's Mark active. So I guess I am going to attack and just hope that that makes enough of a difference. All right. Um, I am going to switch away from the darts to my javelins. Uh, assuming you're cool saying that I picked them up during downtime. I think I remembered to say that I did, but I don't. You grabbed some I... javelins before. I know you did. So. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to throw one with a nat one. So that's not going to add work. Uh, um, and two with a, uh, wait, it's, it's 15 to hit. All right. That's a hit. Okay. 15 hit, and that was going to be not amazing damage. Uh, eight piercing damage with the second attack. So mm -hmm. that's all I got in me at the moment. All right. Yeah. You can see, oh. as you would expect, you can see that it doesn't do much. <laughs> but yeah, little That's splatters, fine. you know. Yep. Um, right. And then, yeah, going to move away a little bit. All right. Excellent. Uh, I would like someone to make a constitution saving throw on behalf of Vara, please. My dice have turned against me, so uh, uh, maybe someone else should volunteer. Birthday dice? Birthday dice? Birthday dice. Oh my god, what if we cast the birthday dice? Oh no. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I can't do it, I have one arm. Birthday dice. Huh. Oh, natural 18! Nice! 
Darn. But they died. <laughs> he was getting ready to <laughs> roll so much <laughs> dice. He was loading that cup for the longest time. I noticed that. No. Okay, that's stressful. That's stressful. No more rolling for Vara. Ooh. All right. Well, you might want to move Vara then. That's all I can say. <laughs> all right. That was my plan. <laughs> Ptolemaeus, you're up. <sighs> okay. I barely can move Vara, but I might be able to do some damage. I'll use my a third level spell slot and right behind him or this creature, whatever it is, uh, I will start uh, muttering different words in different uh, languages, kind of mixing between common, sylvan, and celestial, okay. uh, sending him into these, these dissonant whispers into awesome. this creature's mind. Uh, and it's a wisdom saving throw of 15. That is an 18. Okay, that's half damage. Uh, da, 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 da. You don't... Uh, should be half damage. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, it half damage and then it doesn't have to move away. So it's not frightened for, of me. Yep. But I could still roll my damage. That is... Would have been, what would have been fourteen points of damage is now seven. To the thing, the the where its head would be splashes a bit and thins out a bit more, but that's the only effect you can see. Okay, I need to save my resources. So I couldn't really stack them this time. But that's okay. Uh, all right. With that, I think that's the end of my turn here. All right. Adrastos. As we like to call him, righty. Lefty, actually. <laughs> um, I'm going to look to Tikros' Formerly known that as. Thing. <laughs> yeah, formerly known as. South Paul. So I'm gonna I'm going to ask Tikaros, just ignoring the stump of my arm, is Vara inside that monster? Yes. Yes. Drop my javelin, reach in and grab Vara. <laughs> and attempt to, to sacrifice pull it all out. of my limbs and attempt to pull her out and like into my body. You need to Are stop you? reaching into volatile substances. Man. Okay. <laughs> it was either that or or all of it would be on me. Look, here we here we are. This is just this is where we're at now. Give me this a is what happens when I sleep through a day. Give me a strength check, please. Okay. Come on, big guy. Ooh. Check or save? A check. Okay. Still good. 21. Ah, oh, no problem. You are able to drag Var out. She's covered in this, you know, purple mucusy ooze. You get her dragon. Okay, out. so I will take the unconscious form of Vara, I will pull it into my chest, and I will say, let's move! And then I will turn and run. <laughs> All right. Dikaros. Um, I'm assuming I can't move my full speed with a person. Definitely not. We would say half. Okay, point. so half round it up? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Five. Okay. Although you you were in melee range and are now moving out of it without any yeah. disengagement, so I think I am going to give it an attack of opportunity because it just seems fair. That's okay. So it is going to lash out and try to slam at you with a its pseudo arm, and that is going to be a twenty one. That'll hit. All right. I haven't had to use these dice yet tonight. Sorry, I had to find them. No, it's okay. And that is going to be nine bludgeoning damage. Taint nothing. <laughs> All right. So I would have had to move, I think, five feet to get into melee range. So I will count that as five, 10, 15. I'll move to right there. All right. Now, Tikaros. Oh, my word. Okay. Adrastos is running? Adrastos is running? 
Adrastos has one arm. <laughs> but this I is just what would go through her head. This is what would go through her head. She's like, oh, okay. And she just vanishes like in a cloud of silvery smoke. And she appears again uh, here ahead of you, Adrastos, just like, oh, okay, we're running using Misty Step. Awesome. Very good. Okay. And then that's my action. I'm going to run a little bit further and start to prep like whatever I can as a defensive spell for my next round. So I'm going to move a little further up, up this corridor, not my full movement, but I'll go 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 more feet away, okay. just looking behind me the whole time. Right. And that's me. Excellent. All right. Oh, man. So everyone else is running. And Ptolemaeus is still in the friggin' room. Yeah, pretty much. Telling them to run to close the door, but you know, it happens this way. <laughs> are you are you doing are you No, we're we're good, we're good. Do you it's do this... you have do you have an exit strategy? Somewhat. Somewhat, yes. Okay. Cause I can help if not. Um all right. I mean much more I can do than just try again to throw things at it. It's yeah. what I'm good at, ostensibly. I think it's a good thing. That's a that's a good idea. Uh, all right. So, that is, uh, 15 to hit with the first attack. Okay, that's a hit. Nine plus five is 14. Uh, 14 piercing damage with the first attack, and okay. um, five of it was Hunter's Mark. Gotcha, okay. And then with the second attack, it is an 18 to hit. That's a hit four regular damage and three hunter's mark damage and then and then uh the bonus the damage bonus sorry it's not four regular damage it is nine regular damage okay um that was my attack action and All my all my javelins are just over there. Are they still sticking out of the creature, or did they just like <laughs> they would they'd go through? Yeah, all they go thing, through thing in the okay. wall and laying on the ground from the angle you're okay. at. Okay, okay, I'm gonna run over there. Okay, I'm. I mean, I probably shouldn't, but I'm gonna move over there. I want to pick up my. Well, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> I am, however, gonna stay where I am, like, or step, like, five feet back for now. That's my turn. All right. Very good. The elemental looks very thin, almost like this, the thinnest sheet of water liquid that it could be. It's almost lost its purplish color. It is so thin. And it is going to turn, and it is going to move back and roll over Ptolemaeus, who is going to need to make... A constitution saving throw, but when it's weak in state, I'm going to say with advantage. Okay. That is a 16. That is a natural 18, so 19. That's good enough. Absolutely. Okay. And with that, it is going to move, it is going to attempt to touch you. You feel not quite the, the stinging sensation you did at first. And it is going to move off of you, which is going to give you an attack of opportunity as it continues on. Uh, I do not, I'm not holding any weapons, so I will not do anything there. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Ptolemaeus, you're up. Okay. Um, so, hold, so first of all, Vara's token is with, with, uh, uh Adrastos. Adrastos right now, yeah, right? sorry about that. I should have moved it. There you go. Um, and then I will 
run out of the room, uh, picking up Hyrax's javelins on the way, if I could. Right. And um, and as soon as I crest the corner, one, two, three, four, five, six. As soon as I crest the corner here, I'll just scream out to Tikros, just get over to the fire bowl and take it away from the pillar as soon as you can. And uh, that'll be it for my turn. I think that's the, my full movement. I have an arm full of javelins. Okay. And that's it. All right. Drastos. Ah. Uh, hmm. Um. So. All right. How much of my arm do I still have? I would say just a little past the elbow, so about right there. So like here. Okay. Um. That that's that's enough to hold a body. So I'm going to shift Vara into my like screwed up hand to just hold her into my body. Take my left hand take because i have big hands <laughs> um three of my five jab uh three of my 10 javelins out of my pack and put them into hyraxes and keep running <laughs> <laughs> all right as you around enter that area because it the hallway kind of narrows here for a bit you see your arm lying on the ground and you can see the blood around it you can see the part that had been already eaten away, and then the stub. The whole thing is now gray, except for the blood around it, and it is slowly losing its color. The rest of it is now turned black and is beginning to lose shape and kind of become that amorphous darkness, that pure black that looks like dark on the ground. Gross. I'm going to ignore that and keep running. <laughs> All right. You're going to avoid it. Excellent. Tikaros. Uh, so how f do I move oh, my okay. full dash speed, or is it just a regular uh, dash? If you wish to, go ahead. Okay, so I will dash, um, but that will just be my speed since I'm carrying a person. Okay. And Vara is also with me. All right. Tikaros. You notice the arm lying on the ground as you passed it. There's no way you could have missed it. It's lying right in the middle of the path. Um, and you did notice the shape it was in, that it seemed discolored and dark and all of this. But you went ahead and ran past it. I just wanted to put that in your mind. What are you going to do now? That's dark, Tam. That's <laughs> dark. Oh. Yeah, just disregard. There's too much else going on. I'm... Assuming that I heard Tolly say, take the fireball out. Okay. Would I have heard him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you think? I don't yeah, think there's easy. any problem hearing that. You're all within 30 feet of each other. So. And he gave me the lightning bowl from, from our defeating the skeleton. So I have these two things. So what I'm going to do is keep running. I'm mm -hmm. going to run with my move. Yep. And then I'm going to... Use my action to keep running. Another 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. That gets me to there. And then I know. I need a perception check from you, please. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. But this will be good. <laughs> That's a five. Because <laughs> she's an investigator. No problem. Okay, what were you going to do? Continuing? Okay. I was helping Tolly with the fire one, which I remember mm -hmm. is here. But I've done my action on my move. Damn it. That's all I can do. I can just see the fire and the lightning for this round, and I'm going to hold it yep. there. All right. Very good. Irex. Right. So having been given uh, a bunch of javelins, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty clear what they want me to do. 
Uh, and I don't know. There's really not any reason to keep attacking this thing, is there? So, like, it's all the way over there. It was making its way over here. Yeah, it's right there. So, and you actually wouldn't have view of it anymore. So, I, I I would I would move back down. Does it look? Okay. Is it still facing our direction? Does it look like? No, it's it is facing towards the basin in the ground and the thing it came out of. But there is another door in there that we need to get through, right? So this there is going, another door. That is correct. This thing's probably going to continue presenting a problem if we don't do something about it. Um. Now, my question is, with its back turned to me, is there any way I could, like... No, there's no way I could catch it by surprise, is there? Um, I'm more than happy to say sure. Go for it. Okay. What do I need you to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> uh, creep around the corner and throw a javelin at it. All right. Go ahead and do that and have advantage on your attack. Nice. I'll take it. Uh, Hunter's Mark should still be active. Act one. With advantage, that is a nat 20. Don't even have to roll anything. Your damage is going to be enough. You hit it, your javelin goes through it, and it splashes forward, and most of it lands into that basin. What doesn't is droplets on the ground begin to migrate its way towards that basin, and your javelin falls down inside the basin. Oh, no. I want to run forward and reclaim my javelin before the basin fills back up. And also take a good look while I can see it without uh, so much of the fluid in it. All right. Uh, let's see, how far is that? Far With that, move? I will go ahead and take us out of combat, out of initiative order. Because okay. for the moment, the thing is... No longer a threat. And as soon as I see the thing uh, splash out, I'll just shout out again to Tikaros, just, Never mind, never mind about the fireball, just put in the Kyrnos ball. And she goes, I was going to do that anyway. I was going to ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, Herex, as you look into the basin, you can see your javelin lying in the bottom. There's already pooled about two inches in the bottom of it, so your javelin is laying in this liquid. Yeah, I'm... You said it's not a threat, and I feel like it's not a threat. I feel like I've weakened it a lot, so I am going to just jump in and take out my javelin and then climb back out. Well, I think you could reach in, but if you want to jump in, feel free. <laughs> Okay, maybe I won't jump in. I will reach in. Yeah. I'll reach in. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, you are able to grab it out. As you pull the javelin out, though, you can tell that the basin is slowly refilling. Not just from what has, the drops that have been migrating their way back, but it appears to be refilling from some other source. Really? And can I see what the source is? <laughs> it just, it's, it's, there's no obvious like, place. It's just no the volume is increasing. Interesting. Very interesting. And is there anything that I can see in here while there's no while there's not so much fluid in here before it fills up? That is all that is in it. Pick up my javelin, run back out. All right. And I'll collect some of my darts along the way. See if I can reach <laughs> all of those too. All right. I'll also head back into that. the room. And and just with the the couple of javelins that I have of Hyrax, I'll just be like, "You got these as well. Don't forget them." So, what weapon did you use when you got the Nat One? Was that a dart? That was a javelin. That was a javelin. Um, roll me a D twenty. Let's see if that javelin was damaged with your Nat One. All right. Fair enough. That I rolled a sixteen on my D twenty. Ah, it's good. You're good. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. No problem. Good that at least you'd stay in and not let the thing engulf me with, without any sort of uh, reprieve. But 
I think we should be able to keep going if Tikros puts in the ball, but I need to go check on Adrastos and Vara. And I'm going to go and, uh, yeah, Vara's still with you, Adrastos? Mm -hmm. I have not put her down. Okay. Uh, I'll just, I mean, I'm too tired of walking again. I'll just be like, Adrastos, the the creature is, is no more for, for now. We'll just not anger it again. Good. We're safe for now. Okay. Okay. And Adrastus' eyes roll back in his head as shock sets in and the adrenaline from everything wears off and he realizes how much pain he is in and slumps down against the wall, still clutching Vara. Oh, oh, oh shit. And I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> walk up to, <laughs> to him immediately as I see the stump from it. I'll just le lean against the other wall. It's a little, it's, it's a lot less hot. Um, what happened? What happened to your arm? Erica cursed it. It was the only way to get to you. you touched Better the... my arm than my body. You touched the decay then. That was the price. It wasn't from her. Regardless, that was her price. I... I won't be able to make any warm for you. I, I could only soothe the pain a little bit. He, he kind of smiles, or laughs, and says, I didn't think there was anyone who could make me a new arm, but... I've been trained to fight with two hands, and this is... I can tie a piece of wood to this and attach my shield to my arm and fight. Well, I suppose I'll need a new sword, but that's just an arm. The god saw fit to bless me with a spare. Well, you, you say that, but I have a feeling that Anvil Rot technology has gotten to a point where we could make something that is still more useful than tying something to, to a stump. Well, that would certainly be preferred. The stump wow. lying on the ground next to you, the blood that was near it that was red, that turned gray. This arm is now gone. It's just a puddle of this black ooze. And as you sit here talking, Ptolemaeus, it takes a moment, but you're, you're kind of talking to Drastos. You look back at the arm, and you could have sworn it was a couple of inches farther away a moment ago. Oh, it's this thing again. And I'll just be like, okay, we're not resting here. We need to get out of here. That thing's going to chase anything living for God knows how long it lives. This rot is an affront to life itself. Indeed. Well, I will heft Vara onto my shoulder, holding her with the stump, and... Well, now that we're not in combat, I'll shift her back to my good arm and carry her out. Right? Um, I'll just... I'll, I'll just look over to Hyrax. I'll just be like, Can you wait here with Adrastos? Just take a good look out on the rot and... I'll make sure that everything's okay with Tikros, and at least I'll be able to warn her about this thing as well. Looking at is what I'm good at. See you again soon. Wait a minute, and, so uh, Hy I... Hyrax is a good looker? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, he, oh, he's a looker, all right. He um, is a looker. <laughs> good looking and good at looking. Hey, um... <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep walking uh, and try to find Tigros. I'd give you a hand for that, but I'm afraid I've already lost one. Uh, 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 uh. give me a perception oh. check. <laughs> um, all right. That is okay. That is 16. As you are walking along, you notice when you get to the, the doorway, 
there's a small black splotch and it's making its way up the wall on what side of it is it just the door the door that's uh, on the right hand side of it so right about here okay and is it's about, there it's about this big in diameter is there some sort of like a recess or anything that 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 like is where the the the, the door kind of hid away from yeah it's kind like of like a, a little rail thing where it slid in okay so there might be it, there's like a hole on the ceiling that 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 it's like kind of sliding yeah. out or it's just climbing you you can't see yeah it's just climbing up the wall it looks like oh, wow. Oh, we gotta get this done fast. Uh, Tikros, how's the... How's the bowl? How's everything here? Tikros, you've got the bowl in your hand and you are in front of the column. I am. And I'm looking into it going, all right, Karanos. Just because I'm giving you a bowl doesn't mean that I'm not a true follower of Crefix, all right? This is just helping us. And I put the bowl into the thing as I saw Tolly do with the fire one. You put it in there and you hear the crack of thunder and there's a flash of light. And then you hear a grinding stone noise as the door at the end of the hallway begins to rise. Oh, cool. It's done, Tolly. On this this hallway, this one right here. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to draw the shape oh. on here. Give me just a second. That door is going to open. Okay. Whoa. Uh, I'll I'll just go come over like kind of crest the corner on that end and just be like, great. And I'm guessing that the door is close to us instead of the one further away. Adrastos lost an arm. In all of this. So. We're. Still not of. Complete. Fighting strength I'd say. And also the rot made it down here. Oh no. Do we need to rest up before we. Head further? This is awful. Let's bring everybody back into these room, this room. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, with my eyes on that, like, if I'm standing near this door still, as I'm kind of calling out for my friends on the other side to, to come mm -hmm. over, can I still see it, or is it snuck in? It's there, the, it's the moving process? very slowly, but it's definitely moving upwards. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to not be in, try to not be in range of it, changing direction but i'll just keep an eye out for it and i'll just be like the door opened on this side instead careful of the rod there's some on this door as well and try to beckon uh drastos and hyrax to come back so i will hefting vara on my back make my way back uh, as we're walking out uh hyrax you are extraordinarily accurate with your throwing. And then I'll kind of just shift my shoulders so the bodkin of javelins shifts on my back. You can take a few more if you need them. Thank and they're you. fine, Leon and Make. And how many javelins do you have? I have seven left, so you can have as many as you want. Oh, wow. Okay. I only have five total, so... Uh... He looks through them, picks out a couple of his favorites, gives them like a little bit of a whirl in his hand. He's clearly very experienced at handling javelins in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine make indeed. Thank you very much for this gift. And uh, he, uh, he ends up taking three javelins from you. Three? Okay, cool. Yep. So I have a total of eight now. Yeah. Um, and then he will very quietly, after putting them away, uh, clasp the um, little hawk totem 
hanging around his neck. I want to close his eyes and say, and thank you, Lady Nylia, for that accuracy. Uh, before moving on. As soon as everybody's in this area, mm. uh, I'll just go ahead and just be like, the rod's taken. This, the chamber's here. Regardless of how small they're, as long as there is any bit signs of these, this thing, it is going to try to track whatever living thing down here. So we must finish this quest and we must finish it fast. I know we are weary, I know we are tired. But I suggest we push through. Agreed. It's risky. It's not okay. <laughs> oh, oh, my sister, when has everything, anything we've done not been risky? Oh, it dressed us. I'd rather the risk face us in front of our face than creep up on us in our sleep. Onwards. Indeed. Come on, Vara. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you have her? I, I have her. I'm, I'm very strong. I'm aware, but I mean, with losing an arm, it can take some time to adjust to her monitor. I have her, but I appreciate your concern. Very well. If you need help with anything, let me know. <laughs> I will. Though, if you spend enough time with us, you'll learn. That is a request that may take some time. Hmm. Well, I'm willing to wait. Hmm. I'll just keep walking forward towards the door. Yep, okay. I'll follow you. You, the group is in a maze set up by Farika as some kind of a test. They've just opened another door and they are standing outside of that doorway. And I will tell them that as you stand here in this hallway, you feel the air moving out from that area, kind of like a, a wind moving forward. And it's cold. Definitely colder than the rest of this dungeon has been. Okay. Um, I kind of shudder a little bit and just turn to everybody. It's like, is it just me, or does it look like we're, we'll probably get that one done soon? And I'll just point to the the uh, the little snowflake one pillar. It's very astute. <sighs> and uh. I'll take a I'll I'll look around the bend, try to see what's what's going on. Okay. Uh the hallway goes south for mm, probably thirty feet. And then there's another bend in it, and it you can't see around that corner from where you're at. And Roll 20's being a pain in the backside again. Come on, Roll 20. Hey, I'm there's there's less of me now. I'm gonna walk out of here. Give me just a minute. I'm trying to make roll. There we go. Make roll twenty behave. Thank you, roll twenty. You're welcome, Tam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, after after the way after the way roll twenty has been acting, do you really think that 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 regal majestic voice <laughs> is roll twenty's voice? Like nah, probably. Not. <laughs> no, it's more like, yo, dude, cool, everything's fine. Yeah, whatever you say, bro. <laughs> yeah, yo, that's man. it. Um, I feel like, I feel like, I would as soon as I walk out forward a little bit, kind of feel the wounds a little bit too, and just turn to everybody. Does anybody else want to lead? Actually, yeah. Or maybe 
Maybe we should take that break. Well, I can be stealthy. You want me to peek ahead a little bit? Yeah, let's let's do that. I'll I'll be right behind you. Okay. I look around at everyone, then move forward and go into stealth mode. <laughs> All right, roll me a stealth check. Yeah. Keeping low to the ground, watching where my limbs go. Dirty 20. All right. You move quieter than you've ever moved before. (laughs) Step around the corner. And you see a large room. And... It seems to be covered in frost and ice. But at one point in the room, there's it's kind of a lump of this frost and ice. And it appears to be almost breathing. You get this. <gasps> and every time there's an exhale, you get that chill wind that just blows across you. Oh, no. I'll peer back at, can I still see Tolly behind me? Uh, sure, absolutely. If I can see him, I'll speak into his head so I'm not making noise out loud. Tolly, you hear inside your head. Big lump, breathing, freezing. All right, come back here. We're definitely taking that rest then. I'll just walk back out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to have a look at it? It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to it. <laughs> I'm definitely sure we'll get to it. Um, at this point, I'll just I'll just keep going. I'll just like come out of the doorway. I wanted to try. I wanted to try something, anyways. And I'll walk past Adrastos and Hyrax, and I'm just. I really wanted to see if we had any bit of control over these doors. If we take away the bulls, but the doors close again. Um, with that, I'll walk all the way towards the Kyrnos Bowl and wait till I see Tick Rose come back out. Okay. She's still th- so stealthy you can't see her, and then all of a sudden she's by a dress. Mm-hmm. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, then I will take away the bowl and see if the Nothing door opens. happens. Closing. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'll just set it back in place for now. There is quite a bend there. I suppose it's easier for me for for us to just not disturb whatever is inside. Tikros mentioned that there was some something moving in there, breathing. Yeah. I feel like we should be on in tip top shape. At least a little better than this. How's everybody for, for, for resting here for for a night, maybe? We'll just keep a lookout, make sure the rot doesn't get to us. This corridor seems safe enough. The skeletons are far away and we seem to be out of harm's danger. Normally I'd advise against it, but considering our condition, it may be a necessity. Exactly. That's how I view it as well. I'll, I'll keep first watch. And have all of you rest a little bit. It's pretty creepy, but I guess we can try. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess we will take that. We didn't want to take it, and we'll take that long rest if we can. Cool. 
probably a good idea. And I assume you're not leaving Vara over there to protect the door, so I'll move over. No, Vara is <laughs> Vara is with me. I am still like clutching onto Vara. I'm not. I, we Vara use Vara's Vara body to block the doorway with me. while we rest. <laughs> I was gonna keep first watch with me. Um, <laughs> I see her popped up like weekend at Bernie's. You know? <laughs> weekend at Vara's. <laughs> One arm like this, just. <laughs> you get out. You get out her uh, her uh, telescope and kind of prop it up to her eye. <laughs> <clears throat> Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll keep first watch. Do I should I roll a perception or anything? Please do. Please do. All right. Did I say I I, I kept first watch? Maybe maybe it's not a good. Thing. You did. It's who's who's doing idea. second watch? By the way, so they can pick up the corpse of Ptolemaeus. Yeah 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 yeah. Uh, I'll, do that one. I'll, I'll, I'll watch with Hyrax. No, I want to watch with you. I Adrastus wants some bonding time with his new companion. <laughs> That's fair. That's okay, fair. so that, with that already being said, it is a nat one for <laughs> six. Oh, <laughs> not Ptolemaeus. You you're watching for a while, but it's been a very taxing time in here. I mean, you've been engulfed by a water creature a couple of times, oxygen deprived. You fall asleep. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Some time passes. Nobody knows how long, because everybody's sleeping. Tikaros. You wake up and look around, and you see that everyone else is asleep, including Ptolemaeus. And you go to move, and then you realize you're cradling something in your arms. Like, like you would cradle a baby. And you look down, and you're cradling Adrastus' arm. And the arm turns gray. Then just the loss of all color. Not, not even gray. There's just there's no color. And then it fades to black and begins to change shape and begins to crawl across your arms like a web. I scream very loudly. Nobody and around try to you fling moves. it. No. Nobody around you moves and you grab it and it is holding on to you very tightly. And then it begins to form up into a shape and it it becomes this multi armed type of thing with no no real body but think think like a starfish but additional arms a couple of them grasping onto you and then you hear a voice in your head that says my child what have you done Do I recognize the voice? It seems like it should be familiar to you, but you don't know it. It moves forward very quickly, covers your face, and you begin to struggle for air. And then something's pulled away, like someone removing rocks from in front of you, from over you. And you feel this pressure like you're you're buried. And the hand reaches in and finds you and begins to pull and then goes, Oh, too late. Not very lucky. And places the stones back over your face. The darkness goes on as you lie there encased in entombed in darkness the earth shakes no. the ground around you moves 
it opens up. And you move away the covers and climb out of bed. You're in your house. It's getting late. You know Tavi will be home soon. You should be preparing dinner. What do you do? I can't believe I haven't put the potatoes on yet. I run to the kitchen and I start chopping potatoes to put on to boil. Takes a while. You hear, you hear a noise outside. Ah, Tavi must be getting up. You hear some, the sound of you know him unloading things and and setting his gear up beside the house. But the door doesn't open. And then you hear a child cry. The door opens. Bobby walks in, covered in soot and mud and blood. He's carrying a bundle in his arms. He walks over, sets the bundle on the bed, and collapses on the floor. You continue to hear the crying coming from the bundle on the bed. What do you do? Tavi, I run over. Scoop up the bundle on my way to him and check if he's breathing, if he's conscious. He he's he's unconscious. He's he's fallen asleep. He's 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 passed out, basically. Oh my what? The bundle squirms in your arms. I look down at it. She pulled the blankets back. This furry arm with a red wrap round its wrist reaches out towards your face. And as you pull it aside, inside is a cub, a Leonin child. Harvey, what is this? There's no response. Harvey, I'll try just and shake him. Noise. All right. <laughs> he, he, he groggily comes to him. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Serenity. Oh. <laughs> he sees what's in your arms. I, I see you found. <laughs> see you found uh, your surprise. It was a. It was a group of minotaurs. They were dragging this cub behind it, in a, in a. This metal cage, dragging it along the ground as they ro went, and it was just rolling and, and bouncing against rocks and things. I couldn't leave it. Well, of course you couldn't leave it, because you're you, and I love you, and you're amazing. And I just kiss his forehead, cradling this this child like have i ever seen a leonin child before you know what let's find out uh no you have not it's yeah it's uh they're not from this area i i, I know you haven't been up north much but i just couldn't leave him in there and I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I killed a few of them. And I, he pulls out this broken piece 
of a minotaur's horn. I think I made their leader kind of angry. I don't know if they're going to follow me. I, I, he places his hand on your cheek. I don't know if I can fight them all. I, I hate to say this, but I think we need to run. This, this Crassus has, has an army. All right. I think you're right. They might have seen you. I'll pack. We have to keep this one safe until we can return it. I'll pack. I'm going to, I'm going to go find us a cart and a horse. And he reaches under the bed and pulls out the stash of money that you two had been saving to try and upgrade the ranch area, the farm, make it a bigger place. Get some nice things. He looks at the money and looks at you and I'll make it up to you. He goes off for a while, comes back an hour or so later. You've packed things up, get everything on the cart, and you, you head off. You hit the road. He forages along the way, hunts a little bit. He's a good hunter, finding food. And you travel and quite a bit, and good roads and bad roads, until you eventually approach a city. It's larger than any city you've been to. You've seen Krimnos before. But this is this place is huge. It's it's got it's got a bay with boats in it, has enormous towers and temples, has a huge wall surrounding it. This is this is we're we're gonna stay for a while. It'll it'll keep us I think we'll be safe here. No one, no one will look for us in, in this place. Neolantan. It'll, it'll be quiet here. You make your way into town. He finds you a, a bit of a hovel to stay in. And you begin to lead life there. Nobody looks twice at you walking around with a Leonin child. Nobody asks questions. They assume you only well, came from Satessa and adopted it. One day, you're in the market. You're looking for some ink. You've, you've taken up writing and drawing, so you're looking for some ink and paper at the marketplace. And you, you look over and you see this interesting person you've never specifically seen someone like this before they they look like they they look like something that would live under the water it's a young woman carrying a telescope and she looks like part fish beautiful flowing watercolored gowns a little ways away you see a centaur not as clean looking. He's rather dirtied up. Looks like he's looks like he's been in a few battles and decided to keep the grunge. Maybe that's extra armor. There's a there's a Leonin. You know Leonin's now. You've got a child and you see a Leonin. And he has wraps on his arms that look very much like the red colored wraps that were on this child when you first brought him home. You saved those wraps, of course, but you're not wearing them every day. He's getting a little bigger now. And all of a sudden, the sky opens up. There's an enormous noise. You see a golden fingerprint on the Temple of Heliod as it collapses. You hear screaming of people as this temple just falls to the ground. The 
the centaur that was near you kind of stumbles and trips over and knocks you away a little bit. And he looks down at you. Agrios, do you say anything to her? Out of my way, woman, unless you intend to fight. Can't you see the cities being destroyed behind us? Anything, Tikarus? Or should I say serenity? Oh. I look up at him and I say, I will fight and I will also protect. And I step out of his way. Ha! I like your spirit. <laughs> Remember to fight without restraint in a way that would please more mogists. Yes, and this this small framed human female carrying a baby apparently in her arms, but looks defiant in her eyes. He reaches back, takes out a little hand axe, and places it in her hand. Fight savagely. For the last. I will. <laughs> Good. Dust fills the air from the the impact of this entire temple crushing down. People screaming. What are you doing, Adrastos and Ptolemaeus? There's danger. I'm running towards it. Hmm? Vara's... Um, Vara. Sorry. Ariana's following behind. Do you think there's anyone trapped inside Adrastos? I don't know. I think I saw some of the gladiators going in there, and I... The trainees, the children, we have to get them out. Come on, Ariana! Keep up! You can run faster in training! Sorry, Ptolemaeus. Oh. Uh... Yeah, I'll immediately go and and see if there's anybody in the rubble and things like that. Specifically tending to the ones that, that are injured, but still seem like they're not going to immediately die. All right. You see another centaur, a female, clad in armor, as she's standing at the side of this temple in a, a doorway that's kind of falling over, and she's pressing it up. There, there were people that went inside. I, I saw a, a satyr. He, he's got some children. He was trying to get out. I, he said they, they were in the basement. Well, I think I could probably get in there. Small enough, I guess. Make sure to hold that door, will you? And I've got it. Just, just, just hurry. All right, all right. Yes, address this. I close to this entrance. Um, I'll say yeah. Why not? Okay. Sounds good. So as Ptolemaeus runs in, I'll go to the other side, and with a grunt, push my arm under the other side of the door, and then smile at Mira. Can't take it all for yourself. I don't think this means you get any of the. The glory and she pushes I don't and want raises it. <laughs> the two of them struggling to push this door frame up. You don't have to raise it that high, just just not so that it doesn't fall. Just off. go, little man. I'm already down there, walking in. <laughs> down in the basement, you see a satyr, and he's got a group of children. He's like, I, "I've got them. I'm going to get them out. There's some in the back room, but it, it seems." I, I can't get through that way. Do I see the back, the, the, that way? You can you see there's, there's a, it's like the door frame has twisted and fallen over a bit. There's a path through it. You'd probably have to lay down and crawl through to make it. Is he like, you couldn't make it though? All right. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, it's fine. Just get out of the basement. I'll try to make it through. And I will crawl through. You crawl into the room, and inside there are three children. Well, I'll just look at the three children, smile at them, just be like, 
Let's go out the way I came in. If I if I can fit, then so can you. One at a time, though. Give me a persuasion check, please. As a twenty-seven. All right. Ooh. The children all gather together and scared. They they begin to make their way out of it. And as the last one goes through, he turns back and kind of leans against and, and hits this piece of wood. And you hear it crack. And you see as the door frame begins to fall towards him. Uh, I'm going to dive and push him out of the way. Give me a dexterity or th acrobatics, your choice. I'll do a, I, I will do acrobatics. Uh, that is a 22. All right. You are able to get him and shove him out of the way as the door frame collapses, pinning you. You're stuck, but the children are out. The rest of the temple, however, seems to be somewhat unstable. Just... A woman who looks like, uh, Part fish, some kind of an aquatic species, charges her way in and sees you pinned and runs over. What can I do to help? I'm going to make sure the children get out. At least but, that. The, the two gladiators that are holding the door, maybe one of them could help out move the door frame here. Okay, hang on. And she takes the children and begins to run out. She makes it to the top. There's someone trapped! And at that point, there is a very loud roar. And smoke comes billowing out from behind Vara as the building collapses. Oh. Mira looks over at Adrastos. I was going to try and go in there and, and support it, but I couldn't, couldn't get through the door frame. I wouldn't have done you any good, Mira. You're strong, but you can't hold up a temple. <laughs> Watch me try. She puts more backbone in, and I'll raise the damn thing back up if I have to. Trying to reopen the space, but you can tell Adrastos, there's no way. The... The hallway's gone. There's nothing left down there. Um, then I will, taking the weight off, grab both of Mira's shoulders. Not to, like, take her away from it, but just grab her and look her in the eyes. Mira, there is no glory to be had here. The glory is out there. Help the people you can. Don't waste your strength here. And then I'll turn and head out into the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Ariana is standing beside this young female that was speaking to Agrios. A Leonin baby. Uh, that's very interesting. I, my, my best friend's in a, And she sees Adrastos go charging by. I'll catch back up with you. Good job. Stay safe. There are now a pool of children wandering around. A satyr who looks a bit dazed and lost. People scrambling around trying to do what they can to help the wounded. I assume there are not yet any harpies or anything of that nature attacking as there were before. No, no, no. serenity you hear the voice again that says what have you done what are you talking about who are you around you a couple of people kind of look and go what and then that's quiet. You find yourself standing in an empty square. 
The temple's gone. There's just rubble. There's no people. And in front of you, the night sky begins to draw down into a form like a mass of the stars with multiple arms. You know who I am. And the form of Prufix stands in front of you. Why could you not let things go? I'm searching my mind for any memories that would correspond to what Crufix is asking me. What you will be doing will cause all of this. Why are you going to do these things? I'm just a simple farmer. I just want to care for my child. Look after Tavi. I grow potatoes. You have no child. There should be no child in your arms. But there is. Is there, Shirley? And as you hold your arms up, there's nothing there. What is this? What do you want? What do you want with me? I didn't ask for this. You didn't ask for anything. But your anger, I see it now. I see where it burns from. This cannot be allowed to happen this way. No. And he turns his back on you and begins to move away. Wait, wait. And I run into, I run into the figure. I just run into the mass. All right, you hit it. And at the moment you make contact, it's like everything around you just splits and you see all these different things. You see you being pulled out of a stack of rocks. You see a satyr being pulled out of a stack of rock. You see a satyr with a small child, human. You see a satyr with a Leonin child. You see you with a Leonin child. You see all of these things around. And then one place you see a bit of darkness. A place where all the color has been drained away. It's like a cloud of, of black that just begins to grow and move and cover everything. All these different things you see begin to fade into this darkness as it expands. This is a trick. Krufix would never do this to me. I'm going to close my eyes and send out every ounce of energy in my being in this strange space, whatever it is, and just reach out for what I understand is crucifix and the essence and just give myself over to worship of crucifix. Give me a religion check, please, with advantage. Ooh, religion. Ooh, with advantage, mm -hmm. 18. <laughs> you put all this in and you, you struggle and you open your eyes. 
and something that's been covering your eyes moves across it. You feel as it pulls across. It's like not a rope, but a strand, a strand of hair. And you see as a silver hair pulls across. And you're back in the maze, in the room, and you're sitting against the wall. Your arms are empty. And everyone around you is asleep. How much do I remember of that dream that just happened to me? Was it a dream? Okay. All of it. I don't know. I remember it all. I run over to address us. And I just jump on him. I'll unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tikaros. You see, Tikaros is just, tears are streaming down her face. Did you just have some dreams? Did you just have some dreams? Oh. Mm, I kind of like adjust Tikaros off of my stomach and just, oh. no. Are you all right? Clearly you're not. And I'll just like sit her down with my one good hand. What did you dream about? I don't know if it's the god of this temple playing tricks on me or what. Adrastos, you know my memory is terrible. You know I don't remember my life, but I had dreams, vivid dreams. I had a Leonan baby in another life in my arms with a red sash. I don't know what it means. He's going to kind of crack his neck and go to scratch his head with his right arm, look down and just put it back down. Uh, it's, as you said, likely the temple playing tricks on you, but could be any number of things. And your history, even the things you do remember, is strange. I... I met a satyr. I never talked to you about this because we've never had time. We've been mourning something or other. But I met a satyr in my travels when I was on my own who... He described the ghost in the temple the way she described her death. It's possible Krufix is trying to show you something related to who you were, who you are. It's it's all very strange to me. I'm I'm not going to try and comprehend the whims of the gods. As you know, I don't think highly of them, but I know that you hold Krufix in great esteem, and I think he does you as well. So I doubt he's trying to test you or punish you. But we'll find it out together. Oh, I think we were, I just think we were meant to find each other. I don't know how fate works, but I'm so grateful for you. And we're going to fix your arm. And I'll just hug him. And I'll just hug her back. I'm glad I found you too, sister. Regardless of your past, I'm glad we get to face the future together. Just be warned. I... I'm starting, starting to suspect I'm not a good person or wasn't a good person or something I did is causing all of this. There's been too many hints and I'm sick of running from it. So just be prepared. I might not be a nice person. Well, well, I certainly can't find myself being family with someone who's not a nice person. So tell me, Tikros, do you want to do anything evil now? Right now. Depends what you think is evil. <laughs> harmful. <laughs> harmful to someone you care about, or harmful for the sake of being harmful. Of course not. Have you since you and I have met? Not once. And what you did before meeting me has little consequence. Be a good person going forward. 
And if there was evil in your past, you can overcome it. Okay, I'm sorry I woke you. Sleep. No, I think it's time for my watch anyway. I'll go and wake Hyrax. Uh, in truth, so I, this could not be the case if you don't want it to be, but I, I have been thinking since she jumped on you that Hyrax probably <laughs> is a light sleeper and <laughs> would have woken up, but not obvious, not wanted to interrupt or anything. So he's just been lying there awake. No, that's <laughs> fine with me. <laughs> yeah. So you go to wake him up and he's just, <laughs> there, he just unceremoniously gets up. Uh, is it time for a watch then? It is. Let's go uh, relieve. Oh, never mind. He's already sleeping. Well, I'm sprawled out on the floor. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm probably like just next to a wall. I've been like sitting on the wall, but I slid down from that wall. Are you certain so, he doesn't have some sort of condition for the amount of time that he sleeps? It's we've we've been concerned. <laughs> and uh before we leave, as Kikaros is kind of settling back down to probably not go back to sleep, but at least rest, I'll say. Watch over Vara for us, please. Yeah. And I'll move over to Vara and cuddle up right next to her. And I probably won't sleep for a while, but I will try to. Try to calm down. Oh, all I'm saying is Tolly's uh, head's full of stars for multiple reasons all the time. <laughs> so I'll just keep it at that. Hey, Gross, I have sent you a message in Zoom chat of some abilities you have picked up due to <gasps> your piety for prefix. Oh, my word. That's so exciting. You don't know how long you've been resting. It, it doesn't seem like long, but it actually has been many hours, and you all have a long rest. Yay. Nice. Yay. Fortunately, nothing ate you while you slept. <laughs> Thanks to me. Yay. <laughs> yeah, you did it. That watch, I man. I was like that. I was like that. It's always my least favorite to wake up and go, oh man, I'm inside something stomach, aren't I? <laughs> Not again. This feels a lot like an esophagus to me. Must be <laughs> Tuesday. Wait a minute, how long have I been in here? This isn't an esophagus. <laughs> <laughs> is that a is this sphincter? <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Okay. 22 yeah. miles later, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um All right, so we don't need to, we don't see anything during our watch, basically. Uh, nobody does, because <laughs> everybody slept through it. Oh, that's fair. Oh, okay. Oh, because Ptolemaeus never, like, really does. Ptolemaeus fell asleep, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. oh, no. Okay, that'll do well, it. Uh, it looks like we may have overslept. I was hoping to have a bit of, well, a bit of conversation with you, but I think... Probably better we move on. If the ooze is as dangerous as Ptolemaeus described it, and it is seeking living flesh, we don't want to linger. Hmm. Agreed. We should keep moving. The sour fear is better. I'll pick up Vara. Come on, Tigros, let's get a move on. Are you... Are you okay? Um, yeah. Um, I know that's can, a foolish question. You can see that she's a bit, she's less of her peppy self this morning. Like, feel, it looks like something's weighing on her if you're really looking at her face. But no, she gets up and, yeah. There's a big lumpy cold thing to go and try and get past. Hmm. Isn't there always a big lumpy cold thing? <laughs> 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 and then I'll just walk off with Mara. <laughs> Adrastos is trying. Am I even awake? 
I will go away yeah, to wake yeah. you up. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just, just wake up a little bit. Just, oh, I've, I slept through everything today. Yes. I, apologies. <sighs> Nothing to apologize for. We're still alive and mostly unharmed. And I'll just waggle my stump. <sighs> <laughs> Well, I haven't been stabbed this many times since ever. So there's that. That is unfortunate then. There's <sighs> no shame in taking a rest, Ptolemaeus. I think you told me that, but a few days ago. Now get up, brother. We have a lumpy cold thing to kill. Oh, there's <laughs> always a lumpy cold thing. We'll just... I just said that! <laughs> <laughs> I <just> know! <laughs> you guys need to chill. Oh. Uh, <laughs> put that one not... on ice. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not bringing back the Batman and Robin oh, Arnold that was Schwarzenegger, just Mr. Please Freeze. No. Please no. <laughs> ice to meet you. <laughs> oh, uh, now I regret my life choices. That pun gave me COVID. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's getting the tam. Um. Yeah. All right. So, just to restate all the facts that we have, whatever is inside is breathing out this cold air and could potentially be living might be a fight might be something we can convince to let us pass but we should expect a bowl somewhere and some sort of frost that we could bring back so let's get to it okay I'll... yeah i'll just keep Walking forwards, and uh, yeah, wait till everybody gets here as we approach the the room of just ice and the lumpy cold thing. Hopefully, if it can be reasoned with, it at least speaks the same language as one of us. Yeah, I hope I hope that too. With a bit of time before we go in, I'm gonna take one of my javelins and tie it to the back of my stump and put my shield on it so that I can hold the shield. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. You know what's annoying? Vara actually does speak primor primordial, by the way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. What if she just woke up? What if no, she just... <laughs> what if? <laughs> that would be convenient. What if Tam <laughs> broke his rule? <laughs> Stupid goo elemental. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Stupid goo. <laughs> Stupid sexy Flanders. <laughs> I like the idea of trying the talking approach. Let's try and not get too banged up yet. Normally, I would say I'd rather fight a thing, but today I... No. Let's yeah. talk. If that's the case, I'll walk up forward uh, I'll just walk into the room, and yeah, I'll approach whatever it is. Is it still? Is it just like a, a thing that's like there, sleeping and breathing? Or yeah, yeah. As you move that? into the room, the temperature drops dramatically. You definitely catch a chill <laughs> and have to cinch up your clothes against it. And definitely, there is a cold breeze coming every time it takes a breath. Oh, I miss my mane. <laughs> um, ex excuse me, pardon me. Uh, I'll just kind of address the thing. I'll just, uh, are you awake at all? It'll kind of shift a little bit and, and then begin to stretch. Moves and stretches and stands up, and it is very large. It moves its arms, and you hear the ice crack as it kind of moves its body around, and it's got ice scraping on ice. 
and it looks over at you and that suck. Does it sound like the same language as the other? Um... Easy there, Voldemort. No, it does not. <laughs> it actually it sounds to you like the sound of wind with ice striking against glass. It's n no language that we would know in that sense. Uh, well, we're here looking for a wooden bowl. And, and perhaps just a little bit of of your decor, if if that's possible. Is there anything close to it around here? And it looks at you and mutters something else incomprehensible. I, so I'm watching this, and I can't understand what it's saying. But can I roll and roll insight to like gauge how it's feeling right now? If it's at ag it's agitated, if it's chill, pun, ah. like, pun intended, <laughs> um, or if it's just giving us the cold shoulder. You can uh -huh. you can roll okay. an insight with disadvantage. <laughs> oh what has happened to us? That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> What has happened? I missed you, you, I missed you guys so much. <laughs> Can I just say that? Happy New Year, guys. <laughs> I'm just joke too. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, that's unfortunate. Would have been a good, good roll without disadvantage. Uh, that is going to be 14. Hmm. Well, he's one cool customer. You could tell that he's probably a cold blooded killer. Uh... Ooh. Um, Wait, is that what he... I'm actually getting from him? His, oh, no. his, movements and the way he's postured he definitely is not happy with being woken up oh so a little bit threatening yeah um, Ptolemaeus I would be on guard I don't think he's happy that we're here oh no I expected so ever since the the wandering around the pacing and everything um we should definitely look towards more violent means if necessary. I'm kind of like whispering this, so I ho hopefully the thing doesn't hear me, but I don't think there's anything we have that that could appease it. Can I, I can I use this time to just peer into the room a little bit more and look around with, with all the, the wind, like the, the icy chill and everything? Mm -hmm. Could I still... Is there like some sort of fog that kind of like um, obstructs my vision at all? No, the, the room is covered with ice all around it, uh, but it appears to maybe have emanated from where this creature was sleeping. So it's not like it's a naturally cold space. It being here has made it cold. I see. Okay. Yes, a little could bit. I, could I make like a perception check to see if there's a bowl lying around? Anywhere? In sure. The sure, you can. He said, I see. That's why I said, you know, I, anyway. <laughs> I made the pun and nobody got it and I or, feel really bad now. That's or, or <laughs> um, 17. Uh, 17. No, you do not see a bowl in the room. But as you look at the creature, he is made of ice. There does seem to be something inside him. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Perhaps we should have endeavored to do this while he was sleeping. I mean, to be fair, I'll just turn over to to Tikros. I'm just. You got any more of those fire bolts on you? Oh, I have so many firebolts on me. Well then, shall we? I'll just look at the rest of the team. I'll just sigh and put Vara down in the corner, <laughs> draw out a javelin and go into like a Spartan pose. Oh no. If we must. Well, I all I can say at this there. point is uh, roll initiative. <laughs> Yep. Oh. 
Oh, I really wish we could have gotten the drop on him while he was asleep. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned. Or is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not from this group. No. No. <laughs> I mean, this is, this what I good. really could have wanted is if we had, if we were able to just make a conversation with it, and he he just takes the bowl out of his his body, that'd yeah. be great. That would have been great too, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't speak primordial. Yeah, Moira. <laughs> watching the spot. I have a feeling that she's gonna feel really bad when she gets back because you guys oh, are gonna no, play. No, no, no. We kidding. miss you, Moira. We, we do. Miss you. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> Don't be angry. <laughs> All right. Do we have every? Oh, I'm missing Ptolemaeus, aren't I? I I rolled a four. All right. Ugh. More people should know about Doctor Tran. That yeah, was, I know, right? That was so formative for me. <laughs> Doctor Tran. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Don't be angry. <laughs> All right. Q is for Dr. Tran. <laughs> Watch him eat hickory smoked horse buttholes from what? Hickory what? What? Oh, what? Smoked what? <laughs> Watch him kill his own mother with a broken lawn chair. I love mother. <laughs> Did I mention okay, we got a copyright <laughs> strike a couple of sessions back? And all I can figure is it because I hummed a song by uh the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, I can't figure oh, out really? what else it would have been. So anyway, really your jokes funny. are probably going to get us in trouble now. So nah, right. the, the people yeah, who made Dr. Tran are cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm choosing to believe. Yeah. All right. All right. Hey, you're up. The paper trails. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm, it's, an, it's the start of another combat. So I, Gloomstalker going to keep Gloomstalker. And, uh, I'm going to continue making three attacks the stalker is gonna stalk 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 and i and i feel <laughs> no, like this three. is gonna be I feel like this is gonna be the same situation where he's resistant or possibly immune to non-magical attacks so i'm just gonna do it with darts since that part doesn't matter it's mostly the hunter's mark part and i'm gonna cast that as a bonus action okay yeah. all right so one of those attacks no, two of those attacks are 18s, and the other uh, plus six is 24, and the other one is a three, plus six is nine. They all hit, and how much total damage was that? Because nine, nine, nine hits? For real? Oh, no, I thought you added two. I'm sorry, I misheard you. I totally No, 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 no yeah, yeah. I, I just, I rolled all three attacks at once to save time okay you you like, blew wow. my mind with too many numbers let's do that again i think your first two apologies. hit the last one apologies did. Yes. all right let's go one by <laughs> one first attack 18. that's a hit that is too many numbers wow. slow brain no no i apologize i apologize <laughs> it's my bad uh no, it's just all right so that is age. um that is 12 piercing damage. And, All right. and three of that is Hunter's Mark. Okay. Uh, second attack, also an 18. Or a 24 to hit, rather. That's a hit. Yep. And that is... Whoops. Well, dang. I'm going to pick up this D4 instead because I'm not picking that up. Can't be bothered. That is... Uh, another 12. This time, four of it is Hunter's Mark damage. Okay. And then lastly, we have... Oh, I'm not going to bother rolling damage for that one because that was a nine, so that hits. That yeah. misses. Right? That misses, yep. Okay. Now right. Sorry about unfortunately, it. unfortunately, that would have been the Gloomstalker uh, attack with the extra D8, so rip. Oh, um, bad. Oh. That's upsetting. Uh, but yeah, after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and hide behind this corner because I'm a scary cat little boy. So it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ticarus. 
Okay, I am next to Adrastos at the moment. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is remember that I'm a fancy sorcerer who can use Quicken Spell. And I'm going to do something cool, I hope, which is use up two of my sorcery points. And I'm going to mm -hmm. turn to Adrastos and I'm going to say, we can do this. And this is for you, my friend. And I'll reach up and just clasp his little cheeks. And I want to cast protection from evil and good on him no. before he races in, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which gives you fancy things against elementals. Wait, no, let, nice. me look, let me look it up again. Because I'm guessing this is an elemental from my rudimentary scan of it. So you're going to get, the creatures well, the are going to have I, disadvantage. Oh, what? The, the yeah, yeah. Order. The fact I put it in the turn order probably gave it away too. <laughs> <laughs> I, hadn't even, I hadn't even twigged. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, the creature elementals, you, they'll have disadvantage on attack rolls against you, um, and you can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed if they can do That's that. That's so you. good. So I turn to you and I do that, quickening, and it's really quick. It's just like, this is for you, my friend. Really quick, like quicker than you've seen her cast a hmm. spell. And then hmm. I will turn to the creature and cast Cantrip Firebolt at it. Okay. All right, to hit. <laughs> natural one. Oh, oh but, you the oh. firebolt goes spinning by and hits the ice on the wall behind it and breaks it and it kind of looks up, turns back, and you just see as frost comes off of it from its anger. Okay, so I think you, I made it. Normally angry. you get mist or steam. See it's frost. I was going with in theme there. Anyway. <laughs> I'm so, I pleased myself with my stupid joke. Anything, anything else you're going to do, Tikaros? It's adorable. I'm going to just move out of harm's way a little over here. All and right. that's me. <laughs> I'm going to just hide behind Hyrax mm -hmm. and everything will be fine. <laughs> Adrastos. All right. Adrastos doesn't know that he can't hurt these things because he wasn't there for that. Uh, <laughs> so, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yep, he's just going to run in with his tied on shield and his javelin and he is going to attempt to stab the elemental okay miss oh goodness okay uh it's i rolled a two yeah. uh but i have another attack and this time i'm going to spend a superiority die to give myself advantage all right uh it's really um does a 16 hit yes it does okay neat all right uh it's weird to fight with not a long sword i don't even know what dice to use here my poor sword <laughs> sorry i don't get a new one okay uh so Before I waste my time rolling dice, can I hurt this with non-magical damage at all? Yes. Okay. I figured it wasn't full damage, but yeah, I get, I get you. Oh, yeah. why waste the dice? Seventeen. Roll? All right. Uh, and that will be the end of my turn. All right. You hit it hard with this javelin, and you chip a little bit of ice off of it. Oh, okay. I mean. So. so, all right. At which point, this creature looks down at you, and Tikros having disappeared around the corner, it just puts up both of its hands, and these like ice claws extend from them, and he smashes his hands together on your head. So that's going to be two attacks. Okay. With disadvantage, I do believe. Yeah. First attack. Uh. Disadvantaged is going. Hold on just a second. My screen decided to scroll on me. The first attack is going to be a dirty 20. That'll hit. With disadvantage, yes. All right. Error. That is a hit, and that is going to be. That is going to be 24 slashing damage from the first oh one. Oh my god. Oh no. 
And That's the bad, second guys. one is going to, I don't know how he's going to miss slamming his hands together, but he does. Maybe his claws came out the other side of your head. He, he knocks me down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what was the, if I take a certain amount of damage, I might be, like, hurt forever? What was that threshold? Over half of your... It's uh, like 60%. Oh, 60%? Okay. Yeah. 24 is not 60%, because it's less than 50, but I thought it was... And you, you've I already got a debilitating down, wound. Though. I would feel guilty giving you another one. <laughs> I have two! I have one arm and asthma! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the one about the asthmatic one-armed Leonin? Anyway. Uh, nope. Both of them, I should point out, are due to you willingly uh, plunging some part of yourself into something poisonous. <laughs> you save someone else! Oh, I'm dying. And again. both times, Vara was unconscious. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! And both times, I wasn't there. So... <laughs> Yeah. There's a there's a trend. Oh <laughs> man! Oh no! I'm just gonna be like the black need knight watch by the end of this. I'm gonna have no it. limbs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, oh, Alameus, you're up. Oh. What do I even do? I can't talk. Oh, Can no. I? All right. Um, I will. Oh, <sighs> I'll, I'll I'll just look at it, kind of annoyed, and just. Since it didn't seem like it was it was replying to me in common at all in the way I wanted it to, I'll try Sylvan as I as I'm saying. Um, you had to give us a little bit more trouble, couldn't you? Couldn't just reach into your your own body and grab that bowl for me like a like a nice little ice golem thing, whatever you are. And uh, I'll use that as uh, my vicious mockery. All right, and we'll do we'll do that. It is uh, yeah, wisdom fifteen, and that is a save. Okay, all right, that's unfortunate. And then um, I will use that time to move. I don't want to move too far back. I'm just going to move one step back and so that I, I'm able to kind of turn around and also look at Tikros and just be like, I th I'm pretty sure your fire is probably the best thing that we have against it. So I believe in you. Go in there. Go, not, don't go in there. and don't, don't go in there. Just be out here and throw <laughs> your... Best firebolt at it, and uh, don't come in here. Don't do not come in here. <laughs> and do not go in there. Just, just stay, just stay out here. But I believe in you. Just hit it in the face, or in the chest, something like that. Just, just hit it, and I'll give it a bardic inspiration. Excellent. Okay. It's the longest, okay. most uh, panicked bardic inspiration I've given throughout yeah. the entire campaign. <laughs> Oh. Okay, Z, Z, I've got a comment on his comment. None of us thought to call him an ice hole, but he did, and he wins. So. Oh, good one. Uh, Z, who do you <laughs> want to give the inspiration to? You can give inspiration <laughs> to any one of the players. Just say who. All right, back into here. Hyrax, you're up. Sorry, didn't notice I was muted until Zoom told me. Uh... All right, I'm back up, and uh, I'm gonna keep being a chicken. Um, come out, poke, peek out from around my cover, and uh, keep throwing javelins at him. Although, no, 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 I was doing darts. I wasn't doing javelins. You were doing darts. Uh, I think that's probably a good call. Have we figured out what its AC is yet? You know what? I'm just gonna. Roll with it. Less than six. I know what it is. I'm going <laughs> to. I feel like the sharpshooter damage isn't as uh, beneficial when it probably is getting halved. So I'm just not going to bother with it. I'm going to keep relying on Hunter's Mark for damage. Um, let's see. So I'll roll attack number one. That is going to be 
uh 19 to hit that is a hit all right so that is let's see two plus five so that is seven mundane damage and then six magical damage from hunter's mark all right and then for my second that is going to be up Second attack is a 23 to hit, which is going to be another seven mundane damage and then four magical damage from Hunter's Mark. All right. And having done that, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I duck back behind the corner. <laughs> Although I don't think it, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I don't feel like it has any ranged attacks. I'm going to come out here and see how this goes. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be my turn. Why are you gonna point? Why, why you gotta go ahead and point that out? Why are you gonna try and point that out with the whole no range attacks thing? It's gonna throw start throwing icicles at us. And <laughs> I want to see if it does. If it does, I'll change my tactics again. But I kind of want to see if it does. Yeah, I, I just want to say I do, not, I do not think Hyrax means eagle. I think it means duck. Ah. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> At the very least, if it starts throwing stuff at me, it's uh, not attacking uh, Adrastos, who is having a rough time of it. So, I'm maybe, having the worst day. Maybe like, I'll even get a little closer and tempt him, tempt him to come after me. Let's see how far can I go. I've gone 15, or ten feet. I can go another thirty and end up right there. Yeah, I'm gonna venture into the room and Ooh. stand a little over here. Okay. Bloom stalkers yeah. get at elevated speed. It's super cool. Uh, on turn one, they, on yeah, on turn one they get elevated speed. But I didn't use that. I didn't even get my extra damage. It was a little rough. Anyway, that's my turn. Also, address this if it makes you feel any better. It's not the same day. We've already slept through the last day. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there, there's no day or night in a dungeon. My, my day started by being woken up by a pair of hooves in my chest, so no. <laughs> the most cutest hooves in all the land. I mean, that's true. That is the silver lining. <laughs> all right, take a rush, you're up. All righty. Those cutesy little horns are going to run, run, run. Stop next to Tolly and go, right, fire. You think fire? Let's go. Fill it and with I will fire. get it with fire. <clears throat> two bolts. I'm spending another sorcery point to twin okay. it. Two um, fire bolts. I don't think you can. Oh, did I? Did, did you do that to it before? Because I don't think you can twin things against the same target twice. Oh, is that a thingy? Is that yeah, a little yeah, special? Yeah, thingy it has I to target. Missed? It has. It does have to target different people. Oh, different creatures, of course, of course. Thank you. Target addressed us. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would make it a terrible. Yo, you know terrible. what would be really sick? <laughs> there's a spell for you to reflect damage, and then you go and throw it, and then you can redirect the damage. If yet, if we had a monk, and you could just throw the fireball and just give me that mirror damage. shield oh. from Skyrim. <laughs> right, exactly. That'd be so cool. Uh, anyways, uh, digressing. That would be so cool. <laughs> One firebolt. All right, Tali, you have inspiration, by the way. Woohoo! And that is awesome. a 15 to hit with a fireball. That is a hit. Oh! Holy shoot. All right, all right, all right. Oh, oh, where's my D10s? Where's my D10s? Oh, that's a six. And that's a seven. 14 fire damage. Excellent. Or is that 13? 13. Math. 13 okay. fire damage. All right. Got it. And then I'm going to duck back out of the way. Poof, 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 poof. Over here. And that's me. All right. Very good. Adrastos. So that hurt a lot. <laughs> um, but Mama didn't raise no coward. So I'm going to attack it again. 
Uh, well, that's a 15 on the die, so I guess I hit. That's a hit. All right. Uh, for 12 damage. All right. And this is 12... Uh, piercing damage. Piercing damage, okay. Right. You chip into this thing and hit it, and ice crystals break off and fly back at you from the damage, and you are going to take three piercing damage as the shards of ice fly out and hit you. I hate everything. <laughs> I forgot to do that last time, so I will remember in the future. Anything okay, else? Well, yeah, I'm going to hit it again. Okay. Uh, but this time, I'm going to hit it with extra hitting power. Uh, 19. It is a hit. 15 damage. All right. I'm sorry, 14 damage. Okay. Thank you. Still piercing, no magic. And the off spray of ice shards is going to do one piercing damage this time. Okay. Uh, now he's going to get an attack of opportunity because I'm going to move. Oh, okay. Uh, that's going to be an 11, so I don't think I will not it. hit. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to spend a superiority die to switch places with Hyrax. Okay. And then I'm going to move to right here. So Hyrax is just right behind me. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to increase my AC by six. Okay. Uh, so Hyrax is right behind me. And, I, and so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of shift Hyrax behind me and go down into like a phalanx with my shield planted on the ground. Okay. And say aim for the heart, brother. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Uh, just, just for going forward, that will increase my AC to 23 until right. my next turn. Cool. The creature is going to step forward. A couple of spaces there. And it is going to take its hand and just kind of Bash down on your skull, Adrastos, or attempt okay. to anyway. We will see where that goes. That Does is it still a 21. have disadvantage? Huh? Does it still have disadvantage? Yes, it. It, lasts for, it lasts for an hour. Thank you, thank you. Okay, well, that would have still been it. It's a 21, so. That will miss. It is going to miss. Phalanx! <laughs> and with that, <gasps> Ptolemaeus. Oh. Um, oh, Baden's. thank you, bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I lie. Let me amend the record. I am concentrating on the protection from evil and good, and it's 10 minutes. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. How, how is, how is Adrastos looking from, from all of that? Uh, well, on a scale of one to 49, it's about a 21. I see. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not great. I will. Yeah, I think I'll cast a healing word uh, at second level to Adrastos, seeing uh, that block. I'll just go. All right, that's 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 one. Just keep that up. Don't. I, I would not suggest you taking another one of those attacks. And uh, I will use my healing word for... Da -da -da, da -da -da, oh, that's okay, I think. At second level, that would be nine points of healing. Okay, thank you. And then, with that being said... I will. Yeah, I'll 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 just stay behind and and just keep looking out for everything for now. Um, thank you, Z. I do see that, but I had used my bonus action for the advantage, so I couldn't second win this time. And thank you, Ptolemaeus, for the heal. <laughs> cool. That's my turn. All right, Duck, you're up. I mean, Hyrax, you're up. I'll oh man! I hope I've done the joke enough. I'll stop now. All right. 
right. uh, let's see. So I am in melee with it now, uh, which is not what I prefer. Um, well, let me check something real quick here. Uh, you're actually behind me. You're not where you are. You're here. Oh, where? Oh, okay. I'm. I'm where? Uh, right here. You are in the square directly. I am between it and you. Oh, that's wonderful. I, yeah. I, okay, I like being there. That's a good. One. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, is this thing looking like it's we've done really any damage to it? By the way. Yeah, definitely. It's been chipped away at a bit. There are little places broken out of it. Okay, okay. Um, just, you know, not much, not as much as we might prefer to do to it. Let's well, I, you'd prefer it be dead, so I'd say no. That's fair. Yeah. Um, it's just not a lot interesting I can do aside from just continue throwing darts at him. Uh, unfortunately, that's about where we are with that. <laughs> yep. All right. Back at it. Let's see. All right. Oh. Uh, so that first one is a 15 to hit. That's a hit. That is six piercing damage with the you know, mundanely and then three hunters mark damage okay and the second one is a nine to hit that's a miss yeah i had a feeling uh yeah. especially since it was before so hmm. uh yeah i can't think of anything else for me to do at the moment right. um that's it all right that's all she wrote Unfortunately. Campfire girl, you're up. <laughs> hey, kill it with fire. I run in again. This is just going to be my little exercise for the day. Run, run, run. Firebolt. Run, run, run. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Goodness oh, no. gracious, grace, bolts of fire. <laughs> That's a That's a 10, but I think I'm going to use my bardic inspiration d8 right okay come on d8 come on d8 what can you do to a 10 you can do four more it's a 14 that is a miss ah. far out ah! with a scream of frustration i hoof my way back to cover and so keep okay. concentrating so it's ac is 15 exactly then uh -huh. yeah. yeah knowledge that's my turn. <laughs> Knowledge. <laughs> Address to us. All right. I'm going to do the one thing I'm good at. I'm going to punch it and take up space. <laughs> uh, it's a that will be a miss. Probably. Oh, well, yeah, it's a miss because it's less than what uh, Tickerus just rolled. So I will use my last superiority die, give myself advantage. Uh, 18. That is a hit. Uh, for 14 piercing damage. All right. 14 piercing damage, and that is going to be five piercing damage from the ice shards that break off. Okay. I'll just kind of brush off my face and... Wince, I guess, and just brace myself for what's about to happen. He's definitely, as you've hit him and, and been funneling in, I assume, you know, a lot of focusing on the chest, the bowl is almost exposed. You've been doing so much damage to chipping off pieces of ice. So you're getting to him. You're getting to him. Okay. That's it for me. That's what I got. All right. It is going to reach out again and with its two ice claws try and smack you uh, in the head. With Please super don't. disadvantage! Just super so disadvantage. The first one is a 19 with That'll disadvantage. 
Mm-hmm. That oh, hits. So that's, that's going to miss. So. It's... Oh. No, the nineteen oh. hits. Oh, I thought I thought you still had uh, for one yeah, turn. Super... I get that. Ah. Oh well, in that case, one moment, please. The second one I know misses because I got dual mind, so there's no way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's the lowest thing you can roll on a D8? Uh, anyway, that is going to be seventeen. That's going to be nine uh, slashing oh. damage because all I roll is ones apparently on the certain. Here's plus eight. That's rough. Oh my word. Well, I think yes. he rolled more than one D8. <laughs> I more yeah, I rolled more than one D8. Okay, but, that's, yeah. fair. Yeah. that's fair. Oh. But they they all rolled very low. So okay, but that's. Ooh, okay. Here we are. Gosh. Oh. All right, Ptolemaeus. And I guess, I mean, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use both the bonus action and the action in the same, with the same phrases. I'm just going to keep, keep talking about the bowl and all in, and I'll use, I'll use it again, like kind of a, a, a mixed combination of, of celestial, common, sylvan, and whatnot, and and just speak into the this creature with dissonant whispers, but my bonus action will be with un uh, using a a bardic inspiration to activate unsettling words. Okay. So that means I'm using a third level dissonant whisper, wisdom saving throw uh of fifteen. But you have to roll a d8 and subtract it from, subtract that from the roll. Okay. Well, I rolled a 10, and then I rolled a 6 on the d8, so I think it's pretty safe to say I failed. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that too. Um, okay. That's very so, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ooh. I needed to just make sure, you know, I needed to make sure. Uh... Okay, that's not good. That's great. That's not as good. Uh, that's 20 points of damage. Psychic damage. And The creature, uh, the, the creature had just bashed down on Adrastos' hedge, and you launched this in. And he looks, he kind of shakes for a minute and looks up, and his head just shatters. And he falls to the ground. Oh. Wow. Oh, oh shit. shit. Amazing. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm I'm cursing a lot. Um. Oh. Oh shoot. Oh darn. Ah. Uh, oh gosh. my gosh. Goodness gracious, Almighty. Golly, oh, golly, gee, Willikers. Gosh. Yeah. Fudge. <laughs> okay. Man. Well, I'll reach down. I guess I'll put the javelin back in my case. Reach down and pick up the bowl and say, "I guess this is what we needed." Also, some of the ice. I'll just scoop it into the bowl. (laughs) (laughs) There's there's like little groups of icy cups all around, you know. I'll I'll, I'll scoop it into the bowl and then I'll like think for a minute and I'll pick one out of my cheek and just drop it in. (laughs) How hurt is Adrasto still? Um, pretty hurt now. On a scale of one to forty nine, I'm at a sixteen. Right. I'm gonna reach out and cast a second level cure wounds on him. Uh, so let me roll those two d8s. Oh, it's... oh man, man, that was. I have to say that was the most synergistic. I think we fought. That was so cool. Yeah. That was Wasn't that cool? cool? That was yes. awesome. Right? I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, we actually, we actually did things good, you all. We did things good. Uh, you get back 18 points of health. Nice. Very nice. Uh. I'll just look at the shattered, at the head of the shattered thing, and I'll just, um, ah, uh, remind me to not do that to anybody that doesn't deserve it. That looks like a painful way to go. Hmm. Yes. Let's, uh, let's deliver this. Can someone get Vara? Or here, actually, someone take this. I'll get Vara. I'll I'll grab the bowl and I was like, we're heading out of here anyways. It's a dead end. Okay. And I got Vara on my shoulder. By the way, the room in the ter- the room temperature is rising. So <laughs> oh, yeah. nothing to chill oh great. Anymore, so, so soon instead of an it ice. Turns attack, into it's fire room. <laughs> <laughs> it turns right. into another fire room. Hey! <laughs> ah, run! 
Actually, now 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 that I think about it, uh, after the thing starts, like if it the temperature kind of gets uh, warmer, I'll just be like, so if we really do need another rest, I think this is a good room to do so. It's enclosed. It's a little bit easier to to. to well, are we sure this thing won't wake back up? Let's keep going. Um, That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was just... <laughs> and I will put the bowl in to the the one with the snowflake on it. I wonder so if we like... avoided fighting a fire creature in the fire room, by the way. Like a fire elemental. Oh, probably. By just, like, yeah. snatching the thing out? I don't know. Because, I don't know, it feels like there's a theme going on here with... Uh, <laughs> you place the, uh, the bowl in this ice statues area and you put the ice in it and there's nothing for a moment and then suddenly the wind starts picking up and this heavy wind starts blowing through the gallery and the statue of air behind you begins softly with ah, and begins to make this very loud screaming horn noise in the wind as the wind grows stronger and it just Yowls out. <clears throat> and it gets louder. Why does louder the weather hate louder. us? Um Okay, now that I know that the 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 bolt the the doors don't close, I'm gonna run over to the one thing that that I remember working that way, and I'll just grab the Kirinos bowl, take the Kirinos crest out of it, and and run back to the wind one and just slide the bowl in there and see if it, if it does anything. It does not, but give me a perception check. Okay. That's not amazing. That is a uh, 14. The noise is overwhelming as you get to it because it's even louder as you're right up into it. But that does allow you the opportunity to realize that there's a symbol on this. There's a symbol of a bird. And it's actually has a mouth that juts out like a beak. And there's a hole in the center of that. And it appears that is where the sound is coming. Can I? How, how big is the hole? It's a, it's fairly good size, but it, it's not something you would see if you weren't really right on the statue looking at. You know, it's just got all these air symbols on it. But there's typically there's specifically a bird's beak. And it's facing out into the hallway so that the air is crossing over it and making this large howling noise. Can I take some sort of, uh, I'll, I'll just take some clothes and try to like stuff it up for a bit. Okay. Does that, you I'll just kind of. You stuff stuff into it and as you do, the howling quits you know, being so loud as the air moves across it and slowly the wind dies down. And once the wind stops blowing, this doorway right here opens up. Well done, Tol <coughs> Well done, Ptolemaeus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> he just gives you a thumbs up with his one good hand. <laughs> Just a minute, I'm trying to get Roll20 to cooperate once again. There we go. Thank you, Roll20. I need to teach you to read lips. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> I'm sure it'll pass. I'm sure it's just it'll pass after a while. All right, and there is a hallway. How are we feeling? I'll just look over at the party and just... I'm going to let the ringing in my ears calm down a little bit. I don't think I should be leading this one. If we have to fight a beast of that magnitude again, I, I'm not sure that I could handle it. Take point, then. And, uh, Hyrax goes in first. He will follow, uh, Adrasus will follow behind. As will Tikaras. 
All right. I'm going to keep eyes and ears and all my senses open to try and figure out what we're going to face before we face it. Yeah. All right. The hallway continues on. Making a few bends, as you can see there. Making a way downtown. Mm. And And once you get around to that corner, you can see that a little bit ahead of you, you it's obviously obscured on this map, it takes a bend to the south. 90 degree bend. So if you're going to okay. move over into that area. I assume so, see, yeah. Yep. What you see is a door covered in dirt and plant material. Mm. Uh, can I examine the door? I assume that this is another puzzle door that we need to open somehow. Possibly. Possibly another bowl on another statue or something. But uh... It is a stone door very similar to all the others. Uh, as mentioned, it is covered in dirt and plant material. Covered in dirt and plant material. Okay, I'm going to try... And wipe a little bit of the dirt away. See if there's anything I can see under that on the door. It is stone. Just bare stone. Nothing chills chisel into it. No. Nope. Just bare stone. Uh, okay. I still have the the bowl I took from one of the altars. Can I at this point, because I for some reason never thought to do this before examine the bowl to see if there's anything that's unique about the bowl compared to the other ones like if if it's if it's just a wooden bowl or if there's something etched in there or whatnot uh, they have it's just a wooden bowl if that's the case can i walk up and, and try to scrape some of the plant life off there's a there's one of the one of the statues was like a tree statue right mm. mm -hmm. okay. yeah sure. So yeah, you scrape a little bit off, you get a little, you know, a clump of dirt and, and lichen or whatever, and a nice clump of it. And uh, I'll just walk back and try to put that bowl with the, with the, the offering to the, the tree one. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'll, stay here and, I'll stay here and let you know if anything happens with the door. You place, it in, you place it into that statue, and the door opens. Slides out of place. It's open. I'm coming back. Not to take your thunder, Hyrex. I just think I might be a little louder than you. No, that's <laughs> just for a moment entertains the thought of trying to sneak through to see if there was something waiting on the other side. I'm sure we can defeat it if need be. I certainly hope so. There is a hallway on the other side of the door. It narrows down to five feet, but then you can tell it kind of expands back out of ways. I'm going to head through. Let's, um, Tickers, let's stay. Well, no, you have good stealth. Never mind. I'm going to stay behind mm -hmm. in case we don't have to fight what's in there. Okay. You come around the corner oh. and there is an altar, and on that altar is an emblem of the sun. <sighs> This Heliod value. Oh, I'm I'm dumb. I'm sorry. Um, not not knowing whether or not the 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 last bowl has to stay there. Could could I? I forgot to. Can I retcon and said I grab one of the other bowls. Okay. Uh, and no just have it. Like I'll be holding it the entire time. Okay. In case. Suppose Heliod, oh, sorry. I suppose Heliod would value life and light, though I don't know how we bottle light. I could not tell you that either. Try At this point, I'll move in. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. We could try the simplest option, and I'll just, seeing that there is a circular sun in the middle of it, I'll just slide the bowl in the middle of the altar and see if anything happens. Nothing. Again, I, there there was an emblem, and I, I want to be clear, it's something you can take. I think there might have been some misunderstanding. 
Oh, okay. it's like an it's emblem s- of yeah. So it's like the same thing as so it's the yeah. same thing as the Kyrnos one. Then I'll, I'll just grab the emblem and sorry, okay. sorry for the lack of clarity on that. No worries. My bad. No worries. Yeah, no, so no I'll, I'll grab it and, uh, okay. and I'll just be like, yeah, this is just like the storm one. Then we'll we'll see if it works the same way. And I'll go back and I'll and just turn over to Tikaros and use like. And you said you had your fill of, the, of a workout. I feel like I'm walking quite a bit t- today too. And continue backwards to the sun one, which I believe is this one. Yep, one of the, one of these ones. Yeah, that's it. I'll drop the emblem on the bowl and then slide the bowl into the. And as you do that, slowly, it's like dawn as light begins to fill the entire area until it is filled with a smooth magical daylight and in the distance you hear the sound of birds whistling and singing that echoes out through the hallways i will immediately thinking about the birds will go back to the wind one and pull the cloth away from the the bird mouth Nothing. That's the one. Okay. Hmm. Is, is like can I hear a source to the bird song? It just seems to be coming from all around. From everywhere. Okay. Was yeah, there not wanna... another unopened door where that uh, water creature was? Yeah. Was. Do we truly wish to return? Do we have a choice? Just no magic, no magic into the into the pool. You should be fine. All right. Uh, yep. And we're just gonna make our way downtown. Yep, make we're gonna way. head back to that to that room. Um, hmm. oh, Hyrax is close. back into my bag first. Hyrax would like to stealth in first. He'd be like, "Okay, yeah, I'll I'll like, wait here." I would like to check think, check things out and see if the door is even open. By all means. Or anything has changed. If there's no reason for us to re-enter this chamber and risk angering that creature, then I wouldn't like all of us to come in. Um, Meanwhile, I'll grab the, the bowl with, from the fire uh, pillar just to have another bowl to, to hold. Okay. I was like, uh-huh. anyway. You make your way all down right. there. By the way, um, as you move in down towards the room where the fire is, you don't see the black pool of the arm. Well, that's unsettling. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm. As you make your way into the room, the basin in the floor has refilled itself. And it actually does kind of bubble, kind of a when you walk into the room, but nothing else happens. The door is closed. Mm. The stone door uh, off the side over here. And nothing in particular. I don't notice that anything has changed since the last time we were in here, other than the pool refilling. Nope. nope. Mm. I'll come back out and tell them it's refilled, but it doesn't seem aggressive. The door is not open. Nothing seems to have changed otherwise. Let me check everything out then. And I'll walk in and look around. And do I notice that there's a moon symbol on this door? Now that the room is lit up and there's light flashing around, yes, you can actually make out when you walk in. It's not super bright, but it's a very light reflective thing that with the sunlight in here, you can tell there's a moon. How do we capture moonlight or something moon related? I don't really trust this liquid. I don't feel like it's an offering to any of the pillars. Good question. I'm I'm not sure how we capture the night except to turn out the light. Have any of us, uh, do any of us know what this liquid is, by the way? 
sort of resembled the Nix uh, sort of thing. Like it, like it, it resembles Ptolemy's hair, for instance. Yeah. The sort of characteristic of Nix or the next born. It may well be related tonight. Perhaps we. I'm not. Using Perhaps that someone takes a bowl of the water. I'll, I'll try. I'll try that, and I'll take the wooden bowl that I have, and with n making sure that there is no magic uh, <laughs> spells that I'm I'm currently doing at all. I'm just gonna dip the bowl into the the liquid to to kind of. As you dip the bowl into it, the liquid actually moves away from the bowl. Kind of like it's avoiding so letting you take any of it. Ah. Perhaps the creature has to be defeated for us to get the liquid. We already defeated the creature. Do you really want to do that again? Did we I... defeat it or did it retreat from us? I'm in no hurry. No, it ex it exploded. I saw it. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. And then retreat back into the. Then yes, we don't need to kill it again. The fluid in this pool is more than simply what returns to it. It refilled itself magically. Perhaps there's something deeper in the pool. <laughs> Not that we could see from before. No. I I'm going to kind of hand Farah to Hyrax and say, I've already lost one arm. Don't be a fool. I don't see many other options, and I hesitate for know. any of you to do it. We don't even know that this is the answer. You risk life and limb too easily. And you've already lost one. Don't risk the other. And if if Adrastos walks any bit further from that, I'll just turn around and just be like, no, I've been in that. It's not pleasant. No, he wasn't gonna. He, he accepts the wisdom of Pyrex's words. Um, what are, can I check these two? Like anything around it? They're just wrapped bodies. And the skeletons that we destroyed, was there anything amongst their remains? Anything? Just, uh, uh, bones and glaives. Mm. Mm. I want to use my Anoa guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. It has to be the water, doesn't it? Remember it's my like... I... Okay. Um, that seems to be related somehow, but I can't imagine what we would do. Splash the water on the door. <sighs> we should be very careful of the water. Um, so the door, so the door has a moon symbol on it. Is that what it is? That is correct. And in this water, we can see stars. It looks, it's murky, and I was trying to describe it as a bit of glittery and flowing, like the 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 reason I compared it okay. to Ptolemaeus's hair is the way it flows. So okay. maybe a little so bit. Of it. So there, so there are not actually any celestial lights in it. No, no. Okay, never Sorry mind that. Yeah. Can I examine the door and see if there's anything about it other than the moon symbol? Okay. Give me an investigation and check. While that is happening, is it possible for me to? I I have like a couple of empty ink bottles and stuff in my in my bag. Can I put a string, tie the string on the lip of the of the ink bottle, and? dip it into the liquid and see if it tries to run away from that bottle as well. Absolutely. Investigator Tikaros, come here, I need your help. <laughs> okay. I would like to help with the investigation, although actually I don't think I'm even proficient. 
Well, whomever's got the higher uh, modifier gets uh, advantage. So, okay. If if all of you have investigation, what you got, higher X? Uh, what have you got for investigation? What do either of you have for it? Minus one. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, yes, but I am an investigator. But Drastos, what do you have for investigator? Zero. Yep, <laughs> so have zero. Okay. I'll, so I'll, do, I'll do the investigation. I'll, I'll come back and do the investigation. Right. <laughs> I'll give you advantage. Then. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just see what you was like. What are you guys doing up there? <laughs> and I'll come back. We're just all sitting here like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're like at an art museum. However, <laughs> however, I do have to say I have 15 passive investigation. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm actively investigating, no. That's... Um, well, right now I am actively investigating for a 15. So <laughs> So the same. I have a plus three. I have a plus three. So it's the same. As you as you dig around on this, um, you realize when the lights the light from the room around you is hitting it you can see that outline of the moon the glow when you are investigating you kind of block the light a little bit the portion of the moon that's covered by your shadow glows okay i'll hold up my shield in front of the moon because my shield's massive <laughs> and when you do the entire moon glows i think I think we're we're getting somewhere. This is hard to do with one hand. Someone help. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hyrax will come over and hold that up. At least he can do that. Okay. All right. Um. I'll with a with a with like the same cloth that I used to stick the bird uh, stick the bird's mouth. I'll try to kind of touch the the glowing symbol in at all to see if there's any bit of it that's just anything but light there's like the only effect is the one i had mentioned okay when you block the light hitting the the moon it glows try the water again can i see uh, i think for just a moment yes oh i'm going to i'm going to take my own sort of you know bronze plated shield and try and polish it up with the uh, cloth, and then see if I can shine the reflection into the pool of the this glowing moon. The light and effect. you make a hot spot with it, and where the hot spot hits, um, it kind of moves around a little bit, but it seems to enjoy the heat. Maybe. Really. Hmm. Interesting. I think it likes it sun might liven it up a little bit that's probably why i couldn't grab any of it with the bowl did it do the same thing with the ink bottle by the way i, I, I yes assume yes it did it yeah okay uh, maybe we cover the pool somewhere maybe, maybe if the pool likes heat we give it a little bit of heat i'm gonna yeah. try lighting a torch up and hold it close and see if the pool likes or or dislikes <laughs> the torch. It's it, too hot. It maybe moves a little closer to it, but it's not like it. It's like ooh, hot. Doesn't seem to be bothered by it. Doesn't seem to hate it. Mm. I think it's the light from the moon that it likes. Mm. But we need a more consistent source. My experiment done. By the way, I would extinguish the torch. If only, if only we have someone that could cast Moonbeam or something like that. <laughs> She's sleeping. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay. What else? What else could we do here? What? Moon glows in the dark. Is there a way to completely darken this room? Where is the light coming from? Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. And we and can't we close, close that door. 
we still hear the sounds of birds, right? Even in this room. Oh, yes. Yes. I think, you know, the scene bird, from Bambi. Da, 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 do the, bir know, do the, the bird, bird calls sound any particular way? Is there anything I know about them? They sound um, like happy knowledge. little birds. Like any kind of bird? All right. Fair Just enough. various birds. The kind of birds you would hear, hear on a nice sunlit summer's day. Okay, so these are definitely dire uh, birds, and uh, if it likes the heat, maybe it doesn't like the cold. Do we have any ice left? Mm, interesting thought. That's I know the room was the temperature in that room was rising, so I don't know how long that ice will last. It sure melted by now. I'm just going to check with the players because we are a little over our normal time. Are we okay to keep going? Because I'm going to say I'm you're okay close, but you're close, but you're not close. So I'm kind of I don't, like, uh... I, don't re I really don't want to feel dumb for a week. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm getting hungry. So that's probably why I'm not thinking really well. So that's that's a thing. And players, so that's the only problem. Pick a player, roll me an investigation check as they use their memory to determine mm -hmm. maybe a clue if they can roll a 15 or higher. Ptolemaeus, Ooh. you're the only one with a positive investigation. Okay. Yep. I'll give Do you the help. Roll them? Um, well, I mean, I, I, got a, I got a 17. There you go. <gasps> Ptolemaeus, yeah. you seem to recall that everything that has made a difference so far has not been a door or an object or anything else except the statues. No. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. Hmm. So which uh, statue is in the room? The Heliod statue, I assume. Well, the, the, that's the statue. That, there is a statue the with a moon symbol. There is yeah. a moon symbol. But there's, like, nothing we can offer to it. Uh, I have an empty bowl. Um, well, I'm, I'll say it in character. I still have this empty bowl, and somehow we need to emulate some sort of this moon for or, or the is statue. The darkness noise. What about a piece of your hair? I was literally about to say that. Snap! That does work. You do have the sky in your hair. Is there a stars hair. one? Is there a stars? Doesn't quite look like the night sky in which the moon shines its brightest. Yeah, it's a stretch, but you know, we're desperate. Well, the sun is a star, so the one for Heliod has a picture of the sun, so I guess that would be... Okay, Star. yeah, then then there isn't one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll 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 pluck like a couple strands of my hair and put it in the bowl and slide it into the moon statue. Nothing happens. That's what I thought. Maybe cover the bowl. So it's dark on the inside. Uh yeah, I'll I'll I mean did Hyrax give me back the cloth? I mean, Hyrax I, 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 did give you back the cloth, yes. Okay, I'll just wrap the, the, the t cover the top of the bowl and, and see if anything happens there. Nothing. Nope. Oh, <laughs> what does the statue look like? Is there anything you can poke and prod? Because Tikaros would totally be up in that. Uh, it is a statue, and the only thing on it is an emblem of the moon. Arked into it. What happens if you press that repeatedly and annoyingly? Uh, your finger gets sore from poking stone. Ow. <laughs> uh, who's good at, is any, are any of us good at religion? <laughs> I want to figure out who this is supposed to be. Who's the god of the moon? I don't. I actually don't know which one is related to that in Theros. I have no idea. Which ones have we not? Let's. I mean, we can work work the the other way around. Which ones have we not turned on? We've turned on the 
the fire one, we've got the Heliod one, uh, we have the storms one, so all yeah. these three are done. And then there is a wind one that just made a loud noise at this point, didn't really do anything else. Uh, the ice one is cleared, the dirt one, the tree one is cleared. Um, there was one bowl that we started with, like the water one, right? That, that we started with, that originally yes. opened this door. So there's only two left. There's only the wind bowl that still nothing has gone on. And then there's also the moon one. There's a moon door. And the only thing that the wind thing ever changed was that it no longer made that loud noise. And it was opening the door in tandem for this one. If I take the if I take the Heliod symbol away, um does it does it do anything? Does you the, take the, the Heliod symbol uh where is everybody, by the way? Did everybody come up? I think everybody was up here ditzing around with the statues, right? I, I haven't yeah. moved. I'm, I'm still in front of the moon door holding up the okay. shield. Okay. You take the, the uh, emblem of the sun out of the Heliod statue. The light goes out, and the dungeon is once again completely dark. Adrastos? The door in front of you slides open. It's open! Oh, well, that was easy enough. Oh. <laughs> it is pitch black in here, just to be clear. Okay. I have dark vision. I, I also have dark vision. Dancing lights. I'll follow the dancing lights. Like dancing lights come out, and the door slowly closes. Oh, okay, right. okay. If he, if he yells back that it's closed, I'm going to just... It closed! <laughs> Come on, I uh, have good sight in the dark. Follow me. You can take my okay. hand, too. And yeah. uh, he will lead them back to the door. Excellent. I am, do I, what do I see in the room when the door opens? Give me just a moment, because as they're making their way back, Herax, I need... I know you have great perception, but in this case, I need a perception check. I will make it. Oh, no. 32. Oh. <laughs> I Six imagine billion. you're going to get ambushed by some rot. Uh, the the what I rolled is twenty two. Good enough. As you make your way down the hallway, you see that the rot has positioned itself on the ceiling, and as you approach, it begins to droop down. Stop. Uh, or no, not stop. Actually, how much how much of it is on the ceiling? Is it just this one patch it's, of it? It's a it's an arm shaped blob or an arm sized blob. So you know, maybe a golf ball size, maybe a little larger. How long's your arm? How big's your arm, Adrastos? Uh, I, I, I'm go I was going to say I'm going to be honest. Adrastos has some oh, beefy arms. Volleyball, maybe basketball. Yeah. yeah, maybe a basketball. Yeah. All right. I'm going to. You know what? I'm going to try and usher them past holding my shield up to keep it no not my shield i don't want to lose that i'm gonna try and usher them past and just run with them all right i need dexterity checks from each one of them because okay. i'm not gonna say who it drops on but whoever fails is gonna be in trouble oh god <laughs> right hey 17 17 oh, is good oh. I 15. am a 21. 15's good. Oh. 21. All right, you all make it past. Thank God. I'm so glad I didn't leave, because I would have <laughs> failed that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it would have only gotten your head. You'd be fine. Oh, yeah. Don't oh use my. it anyway. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't use it, so... We could get, a, we could get an <laughs> Admiral World version of that, too. Um... Uh, let me see if I can get reveal to work now, because you guys have earned this. Uh, Inside ooh. the room, you find a locked chest. Oh, no. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? It's a mimic. It bites. 
I would like to inspect this chest. All right. It is made of wood. It's very sturdily made, and it does have a small lock on it that is locked. Okay. Are any of you good at uh, unlocking? Of a fashion. He's just going to break I understand off. what fashion you mean. You ask. I've got, I've got some tools. I pull out some little safety top. Naughty Do you guys have tools? tools? Yes. Are you proficient with them? How do you tell? <laughs> so no. <laughs> uh, if you're looking at your DMD Beyond sheet, then on the left side under tools, it should tell you. It should tell you. Yeah, yeah. I do. Oh, sick. They're in my Amazing. tools. Amazing. Because I'm naughty and I've been on the streets like stealing <laughs> stuff and I picked it up along the way. <laughs> well... By all means, have at it. I've um, never, well, I haven't done anything this big before, but... Mm. I believe in you, Tikros. I'll keep watching, make sure it doesn't do anything to you. And I'll also, um... I'll also give the a bardic inspiration. Can I actually do that, Tam? Can I specifically check it to make sure it's not trapped or something? No. Uh, somebody can do a check to see if it seems trapped. Give me like an investigation go. check. I will oh, no, it's an investigation check. Curses. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pick up that skill. Well, I'm gonna help you, so it's fine. We got guidance. This. I rolled 18. Plus no, a D4. Plus a D4 is dirty 20. It does not appear to be trapped. I think it's alright. Go on. You've got this, Tickeros. Give me a dexterity. Uh, Check and you may add your proficiency bonus to it. So, literally, not having done this before, is that just proficiency, or is it sleight of hand, or what? It, what it's, am I adding? I mean, it's it's yeah, it's just proficiency because yeah, you just roll me a straight dex and add your proficiency. Okay. Remember, you also have a d8. Yeah, and you have a d8. Yeah. Can I guide myself? Does that stack? <laughs> Does Go it? For it? Does it? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh I my want god. you to succeed. Can you tell? Okay. Roll to twelve plus proficiency. Oh, it's only plus three. Fifteen. I mean, that's enough right there to open this lock. Well, then I'd be doing that and like guiding myself and like, yeah, what happens? You get your guidance on there and you open the hell out of that lock. Yes. <laughs> The lock yes. opens, you're able to open the lid of the chest, and inside you see an ornate wooden vessel. It's just a small container, it's got a plug in the end of it. Very nicely carved, all sorts of beautiful designs around the outside of it. As you look at those designs, it's, it's got kind of a weave pattern that goes around, and the way it's carved, it, it looks like it has no end. Like it would always wrap around on itself and start over. You can't see where the weave begins and ends because of this effect. Is this what we were sent here to retrieve? I, I have very little knowledge of this mission. Uh, as I recall, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Now what? I believe it is. I suppose now we have to find a way out. Did anybody take the vessel, or is it just sitting there? Because I'm assuming oh, I grab just it. Oh. Oh, okay, you grab it. All right. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say. I bet Tickeros would take it. That's <laughs> kind of been her whole vibe. So who has it? I'm sorry. Who has I'll, it? I'll, I'll I'll pick it up. I'll just. All right. Excellent. You. I mean, you just had a long rest, so it doesn't matter. But you gain all your benefits of a short rest. Ooh. Nice. You also okay. feel quite blessed. So you're under the effect of bless. Wow. Cool. Okay. And you if... suddenly, as you hold this thing up and look at it, you begin to hear voices. Let me out. I'm stuck in here. Help me. Help me. Can I roll inside? Oh, wait, no, he's the only one that can hear it. And I need yeah. a wisdom saving throw, please. 
Oh, okay. You got this, Tully. Yeah. That's a 19. As you look at this and you hear this, you kind of go, no, that's, I'm just here. You know, I didn't get enough sleep. Something weird's going on. I think I, immediately I'll just, I'll just go back to thinking that, that Parika said that Phoenix is the one that uh, took it. So immediately, if there was voices, I I would not hear anything, and I'll just be like, "Let's get going. Let's let's find what's going on." And I recommend let me hold hold it for the duration. Sounds good to me. And I'll just try to block out that sound the entire time as I as we walk back towards the the entrance of the place. Okay. You walk all the way back around that large corkscrew and you get to where you first appeared in this place, which was a wall when you first came in. And it kind of looks like a cave has extended there. And as you walk into that cave, it continues on for a long way and you continue to walk and it seems like it goes up and down a bit. And then it takes a sharp turn to the left. And as you take that turn, you suddenly find yourself standing in daylight. And you step out and you see Prime taking care of the horses and the cart. We're back? Prime, is that you? Oh, where where did you come from? Kind of wondering that myself. Did I'll turn to Tick Tickros and Hyrax and just Did Tarika ever mention how we were supposed to contact her after this? Oh She's a goddess, I kind of assumed we wouldn't contact her, she would Contact us. I would have yeah. said the same. I'm going to walk over to the cart and kind of like gently lay Vara in it. Oh, what happened to her? She's just tired. I think she what, took a What knock happened on the head. to your arm? That is a story for the road, friend. <laughs> Prime, do you think. Nyctos would have the knowledge to be able to craft him a new one. Well, and father's very talented. I mean, he's... And he holds up his arm and kind of flexes it. And he'll actually stand over and kind of put it next to uh, Adrastos. Uh, I, I would presume he could. Do you wish to go back and ask father to do this? Certainly not much use like this. Time is of the essence, but at the same time, we should be all at tip-top shape. Especially if there's more danger ahead of us. And whatever this vessel is, we still need to return it to Farika. Maybe there's a temple that we could return it to. There is a temple to Farika in Krimnos. That's probably the closest village. Shall we head there first, then? I can fight like this for a while. I won't be at full strength until I get a sword back, and... Then Perhaps they have should... one in Krimnos. You should probably find you a sword, then. I just don't want to be indebted to... To a god that isn't mine. No, and I don't want to be in possession of something that belongs to a god who took my arm. No, or indeed a god who poisons the wilderness in this way. Very at odds with my own beliefs. You know, if I'm going to be completely honest, that sentence can stop with, I don't want to be indebted to a god. Period. But that's just me, personally. 
right, let's get on the road to Krimnos then. Icarus, the stone that Ariana gave you turns very chill. You oh. can actually feel it through your, your clothing in the bag that it's in. You take it out and hold it. Yes. You and get a put message. It to my ear. You get a message and it says, No reply received prior message. Are you okay? Where are you? Have you reached location of Lost Village? And I will send you that in chat as well because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, this is the first time I've used this? No, I said goodbye to her on it. But okay. I'll just speak back into it. We just came out of a dungeon of Farika. Adrastas lost his arm. Vara got knocked out. We're okay. We're going to Krimnos. I'm trying to see how much of that went through. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't have a clue. She would just keep talking, probably. <laughs> They're like 25 word limit or something like that. Yeah, yeah you've got limit. you've got words left, believe it or not. So. <laughs> well, she would keep going. Are you okay? What's happening? We miss you. Just remember that we're headed to and then that's the 25 <laughs> <word> <laughs> limit. <laughs> Whatever you do, be careful of 